We'll begin with our pule by Mr. Endo. Let's see. Can I have everyone rise? Happy New Year. Let's pray. Father, we, we just want to honor you um, at the beginning of this year as we start our new year in you. And Lord, once again, we ask your blessing on the whole Hawaiian whole coast that you continue to, to show yourself uh, real and, and help us to resolve the many issues uh, we have. Especially uh, many of our families that are still hurting. Father, guide us. Use us uh, as a uh, Why Night Neighborhood Board. Show us the things you desire for us as a board to do, as a community to do, as a, the community of people of Wainai, that we will be Wainai strong. We ask your blessing. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Endo. Chair, I'd like to motion we add uh, to the agenda uh, ocean safety um, for 3.3. Um, so we have our motion on the floor by Pele Wilbur, okay. seconded by Kaohu. Ka uh, that is for ocean safety to present a report um, as our city emergency and first responders. Uh, any discussion? Anybody have any input? Okay, seeing none, um, so motion passes. Uh, right after following Honolulu Police Department, we'll have uh, Lieutenant Jason um, go ahead and present or report um, his report for ocean safety. Mahalo for attending and being present for, for that report. Thank you, Jason. Um, thank you. And then we're gonna go move right along to 3.1, Honolulu Fire Department. Is anybody present for the fire department? Don't see anyone right now. So we'll move right into Honolulu Police Department. Um, so I think Sergeant Fumi. Aloha, Sergeant Fumi Moraoka from Honolulu Police Department out of Kapolei Police Station, Community Policing Team. Uh, uh, going into the stats for December, 2023. Uh, we had four auto thefts in Waianae, 30 in our district, uh, 21, sorry, uh, four burglaries, uh, 21 in our district, uh, 33, Thefts reported in Waianae, 131 in our district, uh, 29 vehicle break-ins, I'm sorry, uh, 13 in Waianae, 29 in our district, uh, 114 miscellaneous moving violations, uh, citations issued, 15 parking violations, uh, total citations was 129. Uh, total calls for service in Waianae, 1,593, uh, 6,705 in our district. Uh, that's it for the stats. Open to any questions, concerns, or comments. I have a question, Chair. Uh, Coco, go ahead. Hey, Sergeant Fumi, Happy New Year. So, um, thank you for being here. My, my question. I live up in Puya, Waianae Valley, and I believe it was December 21st, uh, we had a blackout, and the cause of the blackout was, I guess someone had hit hit the telephone, or hit the power pole um, on the bottom of Waianae Valley before, right before the first bridge. And so that was like the second accident in like three months 
where we where we the residents of Wayne Valley had to suffer with the loss of um, electricity. But my question was 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 it a, a speeding or was it a drunk driving um, occurrence? Oh, you said that was on December twenty first. Yes, I believe it was the twenty first. I can check on that uh, and get back to you within maybe like 10 minutes on the um, okay. chat, if you want. I just yeah. gotta look it up. Thank you. That's all I had, thank you. I appreciate you guys, aloha. Thank you for that question. I'll get back to you on that. Mahalo, board member Perry. Uh, thank you, Chair. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, Sergeant, regarding that accident, um, there was no, um, when you come Wainai Valley, then you exit through MacArthur Street on Wainai Valley Road instead of um, going down Plantation Road. There was no notice of the road that was blocked. So you would go down the road only to find out it's blocked. Then you have to turn around and then go down Plantation Road. Um, there was no officers, I guess. I, I'm not sure, but um, you know, when you leaving and then only it needs to be warning in advance, so that way people just go down on Plantation Road, whether they're making their way towards Wainai Valley Road. So I don't know if if that is the Hawaiian Electric that was re, um, fixing the problem, or um, or is HPD, but. That's what we had to encounter that day of the accident. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that uh, comment. Uh, so uh, normally, if there is a motor vehicle collision and uh, one road is blocked, we do reroute traffic to where it's open. So uh, I'll have to find out about that. But uh, you're saying that Everybody there was no reroute. Up. There was oh. no reroute until you got until you got to the accident scene. Oh, then, you, then it was blocked, and then yeah. you had to turn around then go down Plantation Road. Yeah. Do you know if that was so, right after the accident occurred? Maybe. Um, where it was blocked is the, the pole was right there. Where yeah, the that accident. was the, the following morning they did that because I I too tried to go down and what. Um, Board member Perry was saying, yeah, that was true. Um, it was because they were they were working on that pole from because we didn't get our our electricity back to like three o'clock in the morning, but they were working on that pole all day. And yeah, they didn't have uh, like signs saying that you're coming down from Wainai Valley that you have to go plantation. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, I will check up on that and get back to you, but. Um, I'll also let our uh, patrol lieutenant know about that situation so next time they can uh, be better prepared and notify the public so that, you know, it uh, traffic gets rerouted further up the road, yeah, instead of having to turn around right by the accident. Yeah, sorry about that. Mahalo. Um, and in, any in person? I have um, board member Crab. Um, hi, Sergeant Fumi. Um, quick question. For over the weekend or the New Year's weekend, was there a concerning amount of reports caught in related to fireworks, like firework accidents, like anyone got hurt or injured or fire started? Um, not, not that I know of. Not in... Uh... Not in our district. I can check on that as well. Thank you. Yes, please. Let me ask a follow-up question. What? Um, in regards to that, in terms of other types of activity related over the weekend, was there a concerning amount of like domestic violence or you know DUIs, you know accidents or anything? Well, New Year's Eve is a busy night for us. Yeah. Um, Tons of fireworks, illegal fireworks calls. There were some uh, domestic calls where uh, 
I believe uh, somebody had a knife uh, threatening people on the roadway uh, outside their own home, though, and things like that. And the arrest was made. Uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing that made the news, I believe, other than you know that incident last night, yeah, or yesterday. Okay, thank you so much, and thank you, folks, for your service during those um, holiday periods. Mahalo. Any other oh, board member Lanford? Um, recently, I've been talking to some seniors that they're concerned uh, with the parking um, in the Wainai Mall because they tell me they go to try to park in the handicap, but somebody else is parked there and there's no sticker and stuff. So they go up to the security, they ask the security and the security says, no, he's not hired for that. He's hired only for discrepancies in the store or fighting or somebody stealing something um, from the store. Um, so I try to um, contact Wainai Police Department. Uh, I think maybe about 10 calls before finally somebody answered. And then uh, he directed me to the ASEU or something like that in downtown. I've been trying since Thanksgiving. And I think the police officer there went on vacation in August, August 5th and come back on the 16th. But he didn't say what year, the 16th, he was coming back. So maybe if somebody else can check his email or his answering machine, because there was another two other uh, police officers that uh, uh, stated that leave your name and number, we'll get back to you. So the thing been bothering a lot of the seniors since before Thanksgiving because of the parade, because of the actions, because of the uh, different Christmas things they have at the mall. So, um, and one guy told me that when he told a guy, like I told him, if you like me, punch your face. Um, I would just move my car and get the hell out of here. And so the guy just never like get licking. So he just um, took his car and he went someplace else, parked far away. But somebody, I don't know, they park in the, they park in the next that that uh, what you call stripe area. They they park any kind of place over there, but. Nobody do anything when you when you ask them. They, they say they not they don't monitor that. So I was wondering, maybe if you know somebody up there in the higher ranks, can give me a call or text me or email me, uh, so I can answer these uh, six guys that been bugging me since before Thanksgiving. I would appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Um... So any handicap violation, do you know if they called 911? Because uh, an officer should respond and uh, cite I the assume, person. I assume they did. did. I assume they did, but the guys that told me that when they call, by the time the police officer come, the guy left already. Or he knows that, you know, he made the call, right? So I guess he just... Or she just jump in a car and leave? I, I'm not sure. I, I wasn't there. I just, you know, I'm on a transportation committee, so I get, I get some mean calls from transportation stuff. So, so okay, yeah. If you want to give me your number, I can give you a call about it. But yeah, if they call nine one one, maybe before they confront the person, then an officer should come over and cite the person, double check if they are uh, qualified to park in that. Uh, handicap stall. They should have the placard and a card that uh, verifies that they're qualified to park the area. And then they'll, if not, they'll get fined if the vehicle is still there and there's no placard, they can be told. So, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what happened during that specific incident, but. Uh, I, I'm also told that if it's a private parking area, um, the city has no jurisdiction on it, but I don't know how true that is. So no, handicap HPD will uh, has jurisdiction 
any handicapped stock. Thank you. Any more in person from board members? Uh, board member Perry, do you have another question for HPD or? Uh, it's really short. In in reference to that last question, it'd be good to let us inform us at the board the, the process of what to do because it it's kind of a common problem. So so that way we know exactly what to do. Thank you. If you could let us know next month. Thank you. Yeah, I'll get more details yeah. and bring it to the board next time, uh, next month. Thank you very Thank you. much. Uh -huh. Chair, I have, a, I have a, um, another question. Okay. okay. Oh. And then we're going to go to community with H for HPD. Hey, Sergeant Fumi. Um, so this is regards to one of our own residents, um, a beloved resident that, that passed, you know, late last year, Darren Benitez. And it was under some very sketchy circumstances. So I was just wondering, um, was is the case is it still on the investigation? Even though we we had put him to rest already, but was there a finding of, of you know, of something that went wrong, like murder or something? Uh, you know, I'd have to check with our uh, crime invest uh, investigation division and uh see who's assigned to the case if if it uh if it was if it's being further investigated or if it was uh closed and uh the family took over okay. with the um funeral thank arrangements thank you thank you because yeah. we have to school together thank you um Go ahead, and if you could just state your name for the record. Hello. Happy New Year, Sergeant Fumi and the neighborhood board officials. Uh, my name is Austin Salcedo. I'm just making awareness because it is a um, motor vehicle operator's responsibility of not hitting pedestrians on our roadways. But apparently, Makaha, uh, Makaha Valley Road, the intersection of Makaha Valley and Farrington Highway, there is repeated uh, individuals standing on the roadway with beer in the hand and apparently they, they don't look too mentally stable. I don't know if they're a product of the rehab facility the, that's doing that over there at the Kernes property, but they're standing on the road and we're making the corners or driving. They're standing on Farrington Highway or Makaha Valley Road, that lighted intersection. And we worry about crosswalk. They're not on a crosswalk. They're standing on the pavement of the road, not on the sidewalk. So I'm making awareness to HPD to patrol that area. And uh, like I said, they don't look mentally stable. So I don't know if where they're who supposed to be accountable for these individuals being out there. I don't know if there's that drug uh, treatment rehab facility on the current property. I don't know. Nobody knows. So uh, before it becomes a fatality and it becomes a responsibility of the motor vehicle operator hitting this pedestrians that's probably medicated and, and mixing alcohol with their medications, uh, obviously because they're carrying the beer bottle in their hands. So making awareness of that, these are adults, not teenagers. So it's a problem for us uh, drivers on the road, making awareness. But happy New Year, sorry to fool me. If the if HPD can do patrols and uh, keep our roadways safe for us um, motor vehicle operators, appreciate that. That's all I have. Thank you. Happy New Year, Mr. Salcido. Oh, uh, uh, I'll bring this up to the transportation committee as well on the on the fort as well too. But I'm bringing it up forefront on the HPD's awareness on this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, any other community members questions for HPD questions? Okay. Um, thank you so much, Sergeant Fumi, for everything that you guys do and for always being there yeah, yeah. to help support our kids and everything in their projects that they have in our MOKU. Um, let's stay safe out there. Happy New Year. And thank, thank you, you too. for attending tonight. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Everybody. Um, have Lieutenant Jason. 
You can go ahead. Yeah. Thank you sure. for coming tonight. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jason Patterson. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. I'm the Lieutenant of Ocean Safety for District 4, which is the Leeward Coast, uh, Waianae. I mean, from Keawa, Ula, Yokohama, all the way down to Kahi Point in Nanakuli. Uh, first time here. So this is I'm going to do an introduction. I lived on this side of the island my whole life. I graduated from Waianae High School with some of the board members. Um, worked as a lieutenant. I mean, worked as a lifeguard on this side for about 32 years. So uh, very well known, the areas and the beaches and uh, on this side of the island. Uh, so for ocean safety, we have we have seven lifeguard towers. Kahi Point is the our, our our brand new tower that opened up in August, and that have seen a lot of um, tourists. A lot of people have been coming there, and we have done uh, about like ninety rescues just at that beach since August. Compared to the rest of the beach, Waianae, I mean, not Waianae, but Makaha, Yokohama, put all of those beaches together. Kahi Point did that in, since August of rescues. But for ocean safety, we, we, um, we, we focus on prevention. So we like to like warn the public, warn the people, warn tourists about the uh, dangerous, hazardous ocean conditions. And, and it, that's why our numbers uh, stay pretty low. Uh, when it comes to rescues, uh, we do had we did have uh, some CPR cases, a uh, couple of drownings this year, but uh, but it, the the numbers are very low. And um, one of the main concerns, probably that that I've seen change, is when there is high surf, Kiava uh, Ula or Yokohama, we uh, the state closes the gate so that that we can avoid the hikers going out to the point and, and getting into trouble. So that's the main uh, concerns that, <clears throat> that some of the people out out here, because, you know, we still want to drive out there and, and turn around and just do the cruise, but the gate is closed because of the high surf conditions and waves going into the, the hiking trail. So we don't, um, so, so people don't get, get into trouble. And and in in the past we used to have that open, and then we had some serious, you know, rescues out at the point. So like this year we've been uh, closing the gate. The state has been closing the gate, just due to the hazardous ocean conditions. But other than that, we've probably seen maybe average three hundred thousand people per beach, seven towers. So that's been coming to our our side. And it's been increasing since social media, <laughs> you know, because there's like you have um, one, you have the hiking trail like uh, Kiavaula, two, you have uh, the Mermaid Cave in Nanakuli, and and Kahi Point is a very beautiful place to uh, snorkel and dive and all that, and then Makaa you have the big surf, so we definitely seen an increase of visitors to our side of the island. Mahalo, yep, thank you. And thank oh, you for your service. Yep, thank you. Prevention, I think, is is definitely key. So thank you for doing that. Yes. Uh, yeah. Obviously, it's showing it works, um, giving awareness to communities. So thank yeah, you yeah, very thank much. You. Um, does board thank members you. have I have a question? Um, board member Wilbur? Uh, yesterday um, at Maili Beach Park, you guys had an incident, not really an incident, but a situation involving, involving a tiger shark they kind of was fishing you <laughs> know and it was fishing in a bunch of uh swimmers and stuff like that so the, the shark was actually kind of swim going in and out and swimming around and and um and catching fish but doing it between people mm -hmm. um do is is there a more presence of tiger sharks in the area should we be concerned or or, or how should people um really approach that situation yeah um you know the sharks are in the water they're gonna be always there that's you know that's their home and um but we we have seen an increase of of activity of um 
sharks coming close closer to shore and um i'm not sure sure why but sometimes when sharks come in it's usually they're, they're attracted something has brought them in maybe you have people that was fishing the night before and then the fish they don't want or their bait they just throw it back in the water and it, it's on the shoreline and then the sharks come in and and then since that but there's been you know especially in the months of it, it's funny because you have shocktober right on, on tv but normally it, it, that's true because they come around that time around all september october november you, you we start to see a lot of that uh, activity coming around but you know they're they're out there and then there's so many people out in the water that they're they're able to catch it when when they when they see one coming along you know and then uh, we determine wh whether it's being aggressive or they're, they're just uh, passing by because some some sharks they're very territorial so they have a pattern with where they're swimming in one area and then they just swim right past and then go to the next along the whole coastline that's the big the big tigers but other than that yeah we just we just make that call when we see one we just warn the public and if it's very aggressive then we close down the beach for like four hours and 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 monitor and if you see it again it, we, we close we keep it closed for longer but other than that yeah we just keep an, with a close eye on that mahalo um i see board member perry thank you thank you for coming um it's just a comment if to educate the public if there's a possibility of going to our neighborhood schools the charter school and uh traditional school and or um, create some kind of um, pamphlet or fact finding and uh, have it attached to um, the permit when they want to rent the park um, space for parties or whatever. If an attachment can be either to the application process about ocean safety and or go to the public school in 96792. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mahalo. Mahalo. Any other? Okay. I, I, have a, I have a question, Chair. Sure. I'm going to go to a board member crab and then we can go to board member Fahilani. Um, really quickly, for the new um, tower at Kahi Point, was it in resp the, was the implementation of the tower due to the increase in cost to? Um, the beach over there? Yes, because uh, Kahi Point was, it was unguarded. So we had a lot of major calls, a lot of CPR cases there. And since the tower came up, uh, we had a lot of people that came up to us that frequently used Kahi Point and said they're very thankful for it because they, when they would go and snorkel, they would rescue people themselves, the, the, the public. And yeah, when we, you know, thank, very thankful for Andrew Tapula for, you know, helping us out with that Kahi Point uh, tower. But yeah, a lot of people, like beach guards, would rescue each other out there. So that's why we we uh, we push for a tower being there. And and that's also what we've been seeing an increase in, a lot of beach guards out at the, the unguarded beaches. You know, like Kaos or pray for sex or the beaches of Makua Beach down that side. A lot of people have been going there. Yeah, even though if it's closed off and everything, it is parked on the side of the road and then they've been going in. Thank you. Uh, board member Vahilani. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, my, my question was um, like, when you had mentioned Cal, cause Cal, right? A lot of people, that's an, that's an awesome surf break and but it's undeveloped on the undeveloped area. So my question is like, um, what is the prerequisites to have a tower at a popular beach? Like, so I know there is a bathroom at the park side of Cal, but where everybody surfs and everybody uses um, the ocean, there's no, there's no tower over there and there's no restrooms over there. So with that, um, what is the prerequisite for you folks having a tower there too? at Cal Beach Park, at the undeveloped area. Oh, that's would that be the same with, 
with Makua with from Kula Ilai down to Lele Kohola. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I, that's for the captain. <laughs> but but uh, it's all been on. It's all been written up. It's all been in the works, and 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 you know we're we're constantly been pushing for that since. Uh, for us, it's feel, it feels like forever, but you know it'll take time. And um, sadly to say, if if there was more deaths, you know they probably would jump on it. But um, it's it's not. You know we we have like four mobile response units on this side uh, with the lifeguards. So normally those those unguarded beaches, we get a call nine one one. We we can get there pretty quick, and then you know save a life or we appreciate you guys and i'm glad that you folks are participating on our neighborhood boards um in our neighborhood meetings thank you guys appreciate you guys yeah mahalo um board member vahilani is there any community members you can go ahead and uh, um come up to the mic and just state your name for the record please tall people over here <laughs> Hi, for the record, my name is Christopher Muraoka. Um, and I just wanted, you're probably not the guy to answer this, but maybe the conversation can be started tonight. You, you said that we closed the gates at Yokes. My <laughs> local, I'm not going to say Kiabula, Yokes. Yeah. We closed the gate because hikers, when the surf is high. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can start the conversation of adding an additional gate at the hiking trail start mm -hmm. because hikers i think we can agree 90 percent of the hikers are visitors mm -hmm. so due to their 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 lack of knowledge of the dangers we're punishing the community mm -hmm. you know for me i want to be I'm a huge advocate of kids mm -hmm. kids giving them activity i grew up surfing out there i also grew up surfing at turtle beach and k house and miley and a lot of these places so when we use situations like Hikers, you close the gate. They're there to hike. Mm -hmm. I've seen them. Mm -hmm. They're going to walk around the gate. They're going to continue their hike. So now the community gets punished. Maybe we should start the conversation of adding an additional gate at the mm -hmm. hiking trail head. That way the beach can still be accessed because when there is high surf, the guard is still there. The mm -hmm. gate's closed, but the guard's still there. Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe you can bring that up to the leadership. Mm -hmm. So we we would just have to talk on the state side because the, the state closes, but we're still there to um to man it. Yeah. But yeah, that's a good point. Yes, thank you. Um, any other questions for ocean safety? Chair, sure, just like say one comment quick, please. Go ahead. So this was on Brother Chris, they just they just been go up and, and, and testify and mahalo for his mana'o. Um I just wanted to comment on, you know, do you say no, you local but you're not gonna say Kyavula yokes, but however, if, if you can just listen to me, my brother. Okay, um, there was a reason why our kupuna were named places and so Kyavula is named after the muhe'e. The muhe'e in spawning season would turn red. And that's why the whole and had a, the bay was all food of hue of red. And so that's why it's called the significance. And so Yokama was just a Japanese man that was that used to work for Oahu Railroad that used to change change the tracks, but you know. I want to raise this side to my brother. So just, I just wanted to share that with you. Like, you know, yeah, we all look over here, but there's a reason and why I get names. And, you know, as local people, fortunately, we like to freaking uh, give nicknames, but there's specifics why each. No, Mahalo. And I offer my apologies if I offended you, but I, I yeah. did that on purpose. I do know the story of Kiava Ula and, yeah, so and I respect it as well. I just, I grew up knowing them as yokes. I learned later on in like life. We all, we all did, my brother. Me too, you know, but I was all part of the, you know what I mean? But, you know, and I uh, on my holiday. Um, so we are, if, no more questions again. Oh, okay, go ahead. Board uh, member. Well, not a question. Uh, you know the, the stats? Because I, I, I have a feeling a lot, lot of the, the people you had to rescue was tourists. Can, can you uh, keep track of if there are tourists or locals? Because yeah, yeah. a lot of tourists, I, I noticed had choked tourists these yeah. past couple of weeks, yeah. right? Yeah, we have a lot of, lot of tourists and, and, and a lot of uh, 
young locals with the kids and stuff, but also a lot of the uh, surfers when it's the high surf picking them. So it, it's a mix, but majority majority uh, of rescues done at Kahi Point were, were tourists. Yeah. Mahalo. Yeah. Add to the, um, um, the, can you find out if those visitors were accompanied by a, a company? Yeah. Or uh, if they were part of uh, a commercial commercial group, um, we that that would definitely um, be good information for us. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yep. Mahalo. Thank you for being here, Jit. Thank you for joining us on the new year, and we also ask for your guys' safety as well. Like and blessings upon you guys. Thank you for your guys' service to our community. We appreciate you guys, but definitely. If we can do more community engagements in bringing more awareness and prevention to our to our community, our our young locals, the Kiki. So mahalo for coming tonight. Awesome. Look forward to having you guys more often. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so we are moving on to agenda item number four, residents and community concerns. So just really quickly, um, anyone wishing to speak is asked to. Um, Either raise your hand if you're online or um, please approach the mic so if you guys can start forming the line so we can get through um, everybody um, efficiently. And then it is going to be a two minute uh, time frame for us to address our concerns. If you do have more than one, we ask that you just address two at least minimum tonight so that everybody has an opportunity to speak. Um, and then also just respecting everybody's views and concerns. Um, while they're addressing it, and then if we can just address chair, uh, just so that we are not speaking to the crowd and just addressing, and then we're going to take back your concerns. So it's not going to be an open dialogue. Um, we're here to listen to your concerns. Um, so starting off, you all just if you could state your name for the record. So, Madam Chair, we have this problem with the street, with the state constitution. I mean the. United States Constitution. You know, they're going with this uh, thing with the gun law, yeah? And what concerns me is that they're so adamant about the uh, United States Constitution. But I'm concerned about something that's not on the state constitution. I'm concerned about a, a, a law that we're dealing with that is imposed upon us before the state before even the state, uh, before the United States Constitution was imposed upon, uh, uh, imposed upon us, it's called the Jones Act. Yeah, the Jones Act is being imposed upon us, and our children are leaving our island because of it. Why? How is it? You know, I'm, I can see when we were. Uh, Technically, and I, I'm, I'm just saying technically because I don't believe we still see that when we were a, a, a kingdom yet, that it imposed the state, uh, the Jones Act on us. But now, supposedly, we're citizens of the United States of America. Why are we being imposed with the Jones Act? Madam Chair. So, you know, you politicians that when go vote, I mean, making a loss for us, I mean, look into this gang. We're citizens of the United States of America today. We're not the, uh, uh, we're not the kind, uh, we're not the kind of part of the United States anymore. We're citizens, supposedly. We're part of the United States now. Right, gang? Rapid. We're not the kind, we're not part, we're, we're citizens now. We're supposed, not supposed to be paying the Jones Act anymore, gang. So our children don't have to go to the mainland anymore. So when you guys making the law this year, think about it, gang. We don't have to be, we don't have to be imposed anymore with the Jones Act. So get rid of it, gang. Come on, I'm 77 years old. I got kicked out of school. I'm not stupid anymore. Grow up, gang. Hello, Mr. Monaco. Thank you. I have... 
I have uh, board member Perry's hand raised. Go ahead. Thank you. Two concerns uh, regarding population growth and family planning. Um, there's so much poverty and yet people continue to have children. Um, currently, the U.S. have a lot of immigrants from foreign countries. Um, and next concern, our concern what we discussed at the board meeting, if we could narrow it just in our district, um, such as Kai Point is not in our district and the conversation goes on, which is it's value, but we always run over time so we can just concentrate on what's in our district before we go on to others. Thank you. Mahalo. Um, and then I have here in person, Antikale, if you can just state your name for the record. Thank you. Kale Saucedo, I'm a resident of uh, Wainai. Before I stop my two minutes, Chair, can I address something to the whole board members? I have, you know, this is for the board members itself. Yes. And this is a very big concern because um, you have the committee, the houseless, homelessness committee, okay, on, on um, November 21st. Okay? At the beginning, this, this committee posted, was posted up a little late because I had called you because there was a misprint uh, on it about transportation and I was kind of confused why it's transportation again, but this was a homelessness committee. Now, I don't like that this committee can manipulate the NCO and I do not agree because when you're gonna post something on your committee, we would, as residents, we would appreciate it that we post it earlier. So we can get on a calendar and our residents can come to the committee in a proper time management. You folks have protocols, but this committee is above these protocols. And it's unacceptable because people would, we look at the agenda on the NCO, the neighborhood board meetings, okay? We've been having issues from when Logan was here, you know, you have to put your protocols in action. That's a violation, unethical behavior, because number one, it's not on there, and all of a sudden it's there. And why people already have plans for other meetings, because we don't see it on our neighborhood board, on the NCO rotation. So this is something that's very concerning, because at the last minute, uh, Kupunas was telling, you know, how come we wasn't informed? I went check, never had nothing. And Chair, you yourself, because we called you. Jeffrey, I called uh, Logan, I called Jeffrey. It popped it up here and there. The other concern is, on November 21st, this is all to the board because this is really concerning. When you're gonna have something on the agenda, you're following your agenda. That's not my protocols. That's the NCO, that's the neighborhood board protocols. But when you have protocols, it does not say presentation. Arise a homeless presentation. It does not say it. Isn't that a violation? That's a violation when you do not have it on your agenda that there's going to be a presentation of this encampment or, um, you know, that's going to be coming out, you know, trying to open up in Waianae. So that is a violation, not our protocols. The NCO, your guys' protocols. You guys want the people to respect the protocols, we're doing it. Respect the people's time too. Put it on a proper time so the people would know, the community would know, do not play hide and go see. We do not play. Our kids' day is over. So that's a big concern. So if it's not on your agenda for a presentation, you should have not have a presentation done. That is my concern, boy. If the presentation of homeless introduction is not on your agenda, it should have not been a presentation of these rates. That is deceiving. We respect you folks' protocols, the Sunshine Law, 
we spent our time and put it on the neighborhood board. So we know, and then more of the community people can come. Not last minute, people will try to tell people, hey, this is what's going on. They never know, they don't look, they check. Jeffrey, I'm asking you, put the hammer down. Okay, now that was for the board. Now, can I have my two minutes? Yes. My community concern. But I thank you, the boards, for listening to this. My community concerns. There is so many things coming up on our side. And no one brings it up to the board. No one brings whatever is coming towards our side. But the negative impact, we see it every day. How much more do you folks expect the community? I tell you what, since... 2023, we have a representative for our District 45. I is now 2024. One whole year came and went. Only one time came and suppose let's talk story. And then it turned it out a little to town hall meeting. Okay, that's a concern. That's a concern. Because you represent, don't call people in the 96792, you constituent when you do not listen. You do not open your pepe out. We have two. Choose one you want to listen from. If you're not going to listen to the people, this is a big concern. Then, you know what? Get the hell out. Because we type playing games. We want our community to be safe and sound, happy, well-being. Right now, every day, people got to turn around. Is it safe to go out? Can I go check my mailbox? That's not 96792. That's not 96792. And don't allow them, board, I'm asking you folks, to say that they commit to talk to the community. No, you don't. We will be bringing up things after things, we haven't got answers. Oh, I forgot. I can't remember that. If you don't have the pen and pencil, you can write it down. Don't make promises. That's all we had in 96792. Oh, I'm going to check in it. It's broken promises. Well, you know what? We're putting a chain together. Not our lawmakers. It's the community. It's 96792. We're going to take them back because we're tired of our lives being compromised. We're going to go to, oh, yeah, go ahead, Jeff, go ahead. Am I good? Okay. Um, Auntie Kalei, I just want to address your two comments. I do hear you. Okay. Um, the first one addressing with the committees, uh, with this board, of course, the committees are still fairly new as far as setting up and, and having meetings do go. And, of course, me jumping on as the new neighborhood assistant and getting a hold of the boards as far as committees are concerned. That's something that moving forward will try to attempt to be different. It's there have not been very many committee meetings. Committee chairs aren't used to doing agendas. They're not used to doing minutes. So it's something that's seemed like board chairs. They need to get into the habit of doing it. They have to find the right format they like, something that's efficient for them to be efficient for the community. So we do hear your concerns. They will they will definitely be addressed moving forward with committee chairs as far as agenda making and minutes do go. Okay. And the second one uh, with that is something that I know that has kind of been miscommunicated with uh, representatives if representatives do send or elected officials do send either themselves or a representative there um if a report is made if not there's a report that is sent virtually that is put into the community drive so even if there's not a presentation there's at least a report or a newsletter or some form of information that the community can see um, but as far as the misrepresentation i i hear you Moving forward, that's something that will show improvement, especially with the start of the new year. Um, you did say specifically what, dis what district um, elected official, so I hear you, um, and that will be addressed accordingly. Okay. 
I'm going up. Thank you. So we're gonna go to. Um, I'll, take, I'll, I'll take this one. She, I was speaking to her earlier because I need to follow up with uh, Jeff Jones. May I present something before my two minutes? I have to address what our commissioner had spoken about because there is a. Hold on just a second. Yes. I'm gonna have community member Kathy have her two minutes to share her concerns and then we can okay. come right over. Mahalo. Okay. Uh, sure, give I my hand up to her. And yes, I've been supporting, uh, uh, supporting the board members here since June of this past year when I first started coming here. And I know this is a new board, and I, I'm hoping that this board can be different from the one we had last, last uh, term. Um, my biggest concern has always been the homeless issue. And I don't have anything against the homeless people that are there or you know how they became homeless. I only care about the people that provide the services. If they're not capable of providing the service, they should be followed up by uh, whatever uh, government entities are responsible for them. And my biggest concern right now is the one by Cedar Church. I was there when they first had that issue. We had no idea what kind of a, a program they were going to have. And what we found out was totally different. And like I said, I don't have anything against the people that are living there as tenants. I blame the property managers and whoever is running the place. They're, they have no idea what's going on. And the most recent one that I'm concerned with, I mean, it's very personal for me because it's affecting me. Um, I addressed the trash problem there. Can you imagine 75 or more people living on a four acre farm? They have no idea how they're taking care of their trash. So all you see is piled up bags of trash with food. And in the last uh, year and a half, we've had a, a rat infestation. And I've addressed that to the public health office, vector control, but they tell me that it's private property. So they can't do anything. Each property owner has to take care of their own infestation problems. So my concern now is what's with this um, homeless shelter that Cedar Church uh, decided to open up? They have no idea what kind of problems they have there. They have drug problems. This past March and April, they had a rape issue that nobody knew about. I was there when that was happening. So that's why I know that. But it was not in the news media either. So why? Why was that covered up? Or was it covered up? I don't know. Um, really. And I, I'm right next door to them. You know, so, and, and the current issue is this uh, rat infestation. I'll start off by saying, what was my day like today? I had to go and cover up all the holes that the rats made in my house. I found one big hole outside. I covered that. And in the meantime, the rats had been opening and going through this, that, the, uh, that wall between the kitchen and the shower where there's what, pipes going up. Well, so they went up as far as the shower pipes. Mm -hmm. They ate up all the, that area and they were coming into the bathroom. So I had to go and plug that up myself today. That's, that's what I did this, this afternoon so that they don't come in anymore. So sorry that that's what you're... Yeah, to I mean, to deal with right now, um, we. So I, I what I want to know is, what is the, the Department of Planning doing? Why was this issue of the Cedar Church turned over to social services? They have no powers to control anything in on the property. Just like the vector control told me, each property owner is responsible for taking care of the rat infestation. 
we definitely have this noted and we will try to reach out to the different departments on our end and, to and see I, how we can I see this. that uh, property shown as public uh, uh, public hazard because they don't do anything to, you know fix the situation they still haven't brought in the closed bins for trash containers it's still being you know tossed up into the uh, into the yard in trash bags and the rats are still going into those trash bags. So, I mean, this rat infestation issue has been with the neighborhood from, as far as I'm concerned, August, because that's when I called Terminix wow. and I was told it's, you know, it's going to cost me $1,300. So I'd like to know why DPP is no longer able to oversee this particular property. Because it is farmland property, and now they have, I believe they have 50 units of those uh, storage shelves, uh, sto uh, storage, um, what do you call it, sto uh, storage structures. Mm -hmm. I think it's about 10, or 10 by 12 or 12 by 12, I don't know. And they don't have any uh, electricity or running water. So, you know, it's now a housing project. It's, not, it's no longer a farm. So we'll definitely try to get answers for you, and then we can we can connect offline. Um, but thank you for bringing your thank concerns you. to us, um, and I hope that we can find some kind of resolution for for you to be able to move forward. Um, I, I would like hopefully. to see public health get involved in this because there's a lot of public health issues. Thank you. Mahalo. Okay, we're gonna go over here on this side, um, Boston, and then we'll go to Kauko. Can you hear me? Yes, you want to. Uh, I'm asking the board to begin with, all right, commissioners, as, uh, commissioner as well. Okay. For our homeless committee, for what I've seen so far since October 16th, we need a co-chair for the position. We need a co-chair. It's misaligned right now. It's a broken system. We're not getting answers for every meeting that we've been having since September, October, that we scheduled. Okay, October 16th, we held a town hall meeting, <clears throat> not town hall meeting, by Zoom meeting on October 16th of last year. We had officials, state officials, city. We're supposed to have a follow-up meeting from that, but already cited a conflict of interest. So I, right away, I had contacted our chair and vice chair to appoint a co-chair for the uh, houses committee was the chair who represented us, who represents us now as a chair for the uh, homeless housing, homeless committee, identified himself during that uh, Zoom meeting as a representative for the state of uh, legislation. I found that conflict, this I raised the flag. We need a co-chair to represent the city, neighborhood boards for the community. We appointed one, I believe was a, uh, Philip Ganaban, thank you so very much for the chair, Jonathan, on that, making the fast move. We're supposed to have a follow-up meeting from October uh, 14th with Cedric Gates. He had his talk story, town hall. Again, I questioned that because there was never a follow-up from, uh, from October uh, 16th to November 14th. Never, nothing for the community, not, nothing follow up meeting concerning that because the 96792 are heavily impacted. We don't have the measurement. That's what I was trying to get. The excuse was they're going to seek out state officials. October 16, November 14, no follow up meeting. Town hall meeting with Miley and Cedric in December, still no follow up. Three months back, passed by. There's no alignment. There's no answers for us in the community. We need a measurement for all the state operations that's happening here from the prisons and the courts that's coming to our area. The Department of Health already admitted it's a broken system. State Department of Health, the state uh, hospital has a broken system. Patients is murdering the nurses on the state, ha uh, state hospital grounds in Kaneohe. It's a broken system. There's no accountability. 
but it appears our chair, my complaint is our chair needs a co-chair because he doesn't know whether what position of office official duties what have to use it is going to be a neighborhood board of chair or a representative from the state legislation that he works for he's earning revenue for it so what hat he's going to use so we need a co-chair to be assigned to this okay december on november's town hall meeting when andrew Tupola, i support her because she brought a lot of top city officials inside her hpd management directors uh, prosecuting Tom Brady there, but they stated there was no timeline of all this uh, measurements that's happening in on 96792. Remember now, we had an increase of 800, I mean 80 percent of homicides increase on our side. We don't look too, we don't look good at all on the entire, on the entire islands, on our sector itself. So we don't have a measurement. And we, our management director, Tom Brady, stated, well, he didn't put a timeline, that he's working with the prison bureau, I mean, the Federal Pris Bureau of Prisons to remove all the clean and sober homes, or whatever it may be from the prisons, take it back to the Honolulu so they can be well monitored. That came from Michael Farnby, management director for the city mayor in Andrew's town hall meeting. So we look at that, but again, before I start my present, uh, my, my complaint, we need, answer me, we need a co-chair for the housing committee. That's the question because there was never an agenda made to follow these positions of the minutes of the agenda. There's nothing, zero. That's a, that's a, that's a concern. So our neighborhood board needs to look at that. We have in committee here, uh, meetings, August, September, October, November, no minutes. So how can we say that our complaint is valid? There's nothing, min no minutes, okay? Mahalo, uh, Jeff, you. So Uncle Austin, real quick, just, just for the sake of time, and we can connect after as well. Um, just like I had shared with Auntie Kale's concern, um, the committees are something that are still fairly new, at least to the, the, the board members for this term. This because, is, I'm going to have to correct you on this. Hold, hold, on, hold on real okay. quick. Hold on real quick, okay? It, it is something that hasn't been enforced as far as committee members go, as far as minutes and agendas are concerned, because it's something that they're still out of habit with. And this is just my experience, of course, being new with the NCO. The Wanai board with their committees have, have absent meetings they haven't had as many meetings because they, they're not in the habit of doing that which is something that needs to be generated just like any other habit would be so i understand the the minutes concern the most recent meeting the minutes were posted Meet, meetings prior of course i cannot speak to those but they they're they it needs to be generated habits with with committee members and i know that the committee they are going to be touched about later on in the meeting which of course we'll be able to see who's chair who's co-chair or who, um, who's, yeah, who's co-chair, I apologize. Um, as far as the follow-ups with, um, with, other, with other things, with, with prior meetings, follow-ups don't always come as soon as we would like. And that's the same thing with, for example, like the mayor's report, which is what kind of what we're responsible for at the NCO. Follow-ups aren't necessarily the most timely sometimes. It all depends on who the phone calls go to. If updates come, then they come. If they don't, they just continue to have follow-ups. That's the difficulty with the follow-ups. So it's not necessarily a, a committee chair, a board chair, an NCO thing. It's more of the departments that we get in contact with that present difficulty sometimes. Okay, may I speak now? I think that's a cover-up. I have to agree to disagree with you. For one thing, he works for legislation. He know every session there's a minutes of the agenda. He's exercising that. He's the management office manager for Red Cedric Gates. So how can you overlook that? He okay. already has oh. the expertise. So we're not. So we now we're it. looking at we need a co point of order. Point of order. Hold on, guys. Um, okay. Is so this community concerns. In, we, in a, those things got to be. These concerns up. is very valid, and we can address this offline. But right now we want to respect everyone's time, and we can address this, um, maybe after this meeting. But right now, can we get to community concerns? So we can move on with the agenda because we have presentation um, and we have a bunch of things that we have to vote on tonight.
Oh, I thank um, you so very so, much. So but we can definitely address this. So thank you for bringing it to our attention. And we as a board will work together to move forward in a positive manner um, in getting our committees together um, and addressing the concerns that you bring to us. Yes, but valid, we need a co-chair because of the alignment. Okay. We can definitely have this discussion with our, our committee chair. That's what I want. Yes. You folks all work together as one. Mahalo. Mahalo. Um, so I have uh, board member Vahilani online. Uh, you can go ahead and state your concerns. And if anybody well, else would like to address your concerns, please approach the mic. Mahalo. Uh, but I, um, chair, this is my time being that we, we need, we have to get onto the agenda. So I'm all, I'm all good. Thank you. You, sh you sure? You, it's okay. Yeah. Just, we can't, the, the, the conversation is too lengthy. So we will definitely discuss it afterwards, but your concerns, you can go ahead and state your concerns. Okay. That was just, so uh, I wanted to piggyback uncle James Monaco about the, the Jones act. So the Jones act, it's, it's, it's done through legislation through Congress. So. Only way you can do that, Uncle James, is can get a men go to Congress to amend amend the Jones Act, or we can try and push to Congress to get rid of the Jones Act. So that's all I wanted to say. Hey, aloha. Mahalo. Uh, board member Perry, and then we're coming back in person. Thank you, Chair. Um, I I think Stacy Lynn is in the audience, so that residents that had a concern about Cedar Church, I think she should talk face to face with Stacy Lynn because it's that was a state project and they now have a coordinator, homeless coordinator. So I think it would be um the best interest of the resident talk to Stacy Lynn as as governor rep. Second, um it sounds like committees are not doing their minutes. So I will volunteer to do the minutes. They send me the link and I'll do the minutes and send it back to them if there's any if there's no objection. I know that has been a chronic problem with this board prior to all of us on the board. So I'm out I'm letting all of you know if you need help with the minutes, send me the link, I'll do it and then I'll send it to you. I was previous um um Secretary, so I'd be willing to help. Since I can't make Mahalo. the meeting, at least I can do that part. Thank you. Mahalo for your kokua. We appreciate you. Mahalo, Johnny May. Um, and then um, back to community. Go ahead. Real quick, uh, I just wanted to tag along to Auntie Clay's um, comments earlier. Can we have that presentation that happened without um, notice nullified? Can we have it strike down and maybe put on an actual agenda and give enough people enough time to come out so we can hear that presentation? Uh, we so it has been recorded for minutes, but it can be followed up to come to the regular neighborhood board for an entire community presentation mm -hmm. if that's something that, that sets a whole would. new precedent. I want you folks to understand that if it's been recorded, but it wasn't on the agenda, that opens a whole new realm of things that can be done. Uh, Mr. Jones, you said that it's a learning process, creatures of habits. I say we start new, we strike it, we do it the proper way by putting it on agenda and then redoing it. I think that's right. Mahalo for, for that. We definitely, I don't have enough information as far as what he the process that he went through and if it was accordingly so I think that is definitely something that has to be investigated by neighborhood commission's office um but that is duly noted and we will definitely continue this conversation um but thank you for that suggestion yes a very important protocol to follow yes yeah agree so if it's recorded maybe we fix that yes mahalo Um, anybody online? Okay, so back in person. Go ahead. Hello. State, state your name for the record. Hello. Okay. Aloha and Happy New Year. Why not? Okaha. Are you guys up here? Michael William Capolino Eli. 
Okay, um, one concern is the valley looking like a freaking dump. Just like Lule, homestead, behind homestead, they just power clean them. Harris, Tupola, the Saucedos, uh, not Saucedos, but um, Satellos. I think it rubbish again. I tell Harris, oh, wow, dump them right there. They cannot read the sign. They blind. But you know what? They're dumping over there and in Y9 because I just was up there in the mountain working a lawyer. I didn't go up. I never seen a rubbish there. I come back down. Holy shit. Big buckets. All okay. kinds. Oh, what is this? Wow, construction over here. But you know what I mean? No more presence. No presence to watch the mountain where the water come from. You know what I'm saying? They got to watch what that's where our water come from. You gotta watch the mountain. Then um, the ranch. I mean, this last year's thing, but I bring them up now. You guys gotta get out because they're in violations of all kinds of violations. I mean, I bring them back up again. Some more violations leave it down by Angel's Junkyard. It's some more violations over there. Then bust down on Big Mound. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, if I was on Game Warden, brah, people would be on my hit, the hit list, I tell you. They guys would have plastic citations. I mean, they would lose their lease, right? A lot of dodge. Because they're not taking care of the land. They stay historic preservation. They're running over everything. Who supposed to be watching people do that? You know what I mean? Who where? Where? Where the where the dealer now? Where? Where these guys? Where these guys? I can see it being done after the fact. After they run over everything. They don't care. That's historic preservation now. So where where all these archaeologists, where all these guys stay? Where the state stay? That's what I like, no. I because I sick of it. I mean, this was start of the new year. I love everybody, but that thing making me sick. That ranch too. Stop in your they guys got a freak, they're in drill, like I said. So whoever owned the lease over there, how come they're not and then disturbed by cheese mother and the parents? And they make the fence right there, blocking his way to drive in. How can you guys block that? And his parents then buried over there, the Maninis. You know what I mean? They, they only own that little portion right there by um, the creek. They only own that little portion. And these the guys over there that running their horse ranch or whatever, they guys just disturb Evies over there, Manini Evies. Baichi. Now Baichi no stay up there because they made one fence. You know, that, I mean, that's my concern because mm -hmm. I go up Wine Valley every, like, maybe every other day or if I'm not working. But, I mean, I can work if a state let me go work for them. <laughs> They're not doing a job, that's why. I mean, look at right here on the side of the mountain over here, if you can see. You know where I had water coming out? That's where all our kapunas was. Now I see these guys taking all the puakus down. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, I, I, I think you guys can see that right by the, um, right over here by the, what they call that? The solar farm. Right over here above the solar farm. You go look over there. I don't know who's supposed to be um, watching the area or, brah. Uh, Hello. Pilao, but yeah. uh, aloha. Aloha. Mahalo for staying on top of this. I don't care. Point of information. So the state of Hawaii has to say to our all these guys that go to the Washington that we want to get rid of the Jones Act. Other than that, we cannot get rid of the Jones Act. Because it's a federal law, we would have to go congressional. Congressional. Yes. So so Joe Takuda would be our representative in Washington, and that's how we would address our concerns as far as the Jones Act. We've been sitting on our Okole all these years, and all we have to do is tell those guys that go to Washington, because, gang, we've been paying something that we never had to pay all these years. We Americans now. How come we got? How come they? We're allowing them to raise the food when we don't have to. 
There's no American paying taxes like we are paying taxes. Oh, no, excuse me. Alaska is paying taxes, too. I'm sorry. And Samoa is paying taxes. So they are uh, part of America also. But why we are paying taxes since 1959? Because we are Americans now. Mr. Monaco. So, I, well, you know, I'm just trying to let the audience know that as the state of Hawaii, all we have to do is tell those people that go to Washington, it's time to get rid of it. Because I, if not, all of our children is going to leave Hawaii. And that's not what we want. Right. Right, gang? That's not what we want. We cannot have people taking over our islands because these people, the federal government is raising our food and the cost of living on us, we're island people. Thank you. Hello. Any other? OK, we have one more. State your name for the record, please. Hi, and happy new year. My name is your Ryan Highness, Harris Malahia Fuller Jr. So I get some mean concerns about Waianae Valley rents or Pohonua uh, or Waianae Kabibi, Nanola. So Homo and Pala Farms as the lease, and they on a lot of violations. So I'm just wondering what the state is doing about it. Historical preservations, permitting process, and planning, because that's all we get. And nothing that's right. People just do what they like. And that's not private property because they don't own the property. Could you speak more into the mic, please, so they can hear online? Mahalo. Yeah. And so I just want, want to know what the state is doing about all these violations. Because this is heartbreaking. We will reach out to departments to find out. And I was wondering if you guys made my appointment with the legislatures. No? Oh, can you guys make a meeting with the Attorney General? So we're we're primarily directly under city um, ordinances. We can try and reach out to the departments, um, but our state legislators, I think, would be a better uh, contact for us to move in that direction for you to get those appointments. Or have you reached out? To get those appointments, no, or? because I don't want to be a protester or mm. or activist. You know, I don't want them to label me as one of them or even a terrorist. You right. know, so that's why I came to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So we can how definitely about I reach out to them more. Communicate more about that. Offer. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mahalo. Aloha. Aloha. Um, okay, so not seeing any more concerns. We are moving on to agenda item number five. So approval of Tuesday, August 8th, October 3rd, and November 7th, regular meeting minutes. Board Member Perry. Make a motion to accept August 8th, October 3rd, and November 7th, 2023 minutes. Okay, so motion made by Board Member Perry, seconded by Board Member Ganaban. 
Thank you. So moving on to 5.2 approval of Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. Oh, I'm sorry. Guys, I'm so oh. sorry. Mahalo. Um, so any discussion on the approval of our minutes for those three dates? Okay. Seeing none. Any opposed? Okay, so all in favor, say aye. Aye. Harry, aye. Okay, so aye. 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 Mahalo. Um, so we, motion is passed for approval of minutes for October, I mean, yeah, October 3rd, November 7th, and August 8th. Now moving right along um, to approval for Tuesday, January 2nd agenda. Motion by board member Ganaban to approve. Seconded by board member Kale Wilbur. Okay, and then moving on. To, oh, any discussions? Is to include the added 3.3. .3. Thank you, board member Perry. So with amendments for 3.3, um, adding Lieutenant Jason Patterson for ocean safety on the agenda. And then also, I think the corrections for district 44 and 43 to be changed to districts 45 and 44. On 7.4 and 7.5. Um, any other corrections or adjustments to today's agenda? So motion moved by Ganaban and seconded by Kale Wilbur. Okay, moving right along 5.3, report of board member attendance at other meetings and didn't take vote. Thank you for holding me accountable to the process. Um, any abstentions or abstain? We have one abstentions, uh, one uh, one abstain. Board member Crab. Uh, all in favor say aye or no roll call vote. Jeff. Everybody else, all in favor say aye. Very aye with amendments. So that's one of saying. Thank you, Jeff. And now we're moving right along. Okay, so board meetings, uh, board member attendance at other meetings, board and board member declaration of co conflict of interest regarding any issue under board business that would require disclosure or recusal. Any board members reporting meetings attended? You can go ahead and Mahalo. I attended the town hall meeting that they had. That's, that's, a, that's the only one. Town hall. This is the town hall at Kaina Cafe. Okay. Yeah. Kaina Cafe one. Just just for the record, I've attended the town hall as well as the um the Andrea Tupolas, but as a community member and not as a board member. Okay. Just board member Cab also attended both um, town halls. Thank you. Okay. Do you know what month that was in? Herb, do you want to do December? Oh. I mean, you can state it because we never stated any of it. I uh, I attended the uh, sustainability. The, the, the one is the elementary, yeah. yeah. Sustainability. I forget the date, but <laughs> but I was there. Um, any other meetings? 
So for myself, I attended our um, council members town hall, our representative and senator town hall, and I also attended um, Nanakuli Neighborhood Board's housing committee um, on December 18th. So that is my attendance as far as meetings. Um, any other reports for board members? Um, board member Crab also attended the Nanakuli housing meeting. Mahalo. Okay. Um, so moving on to 5.4, no mooring resolution update. Um, and I believe we do have Carmen online. If anybody has any questions, but did everyone get to review the reso? Okay, so I'm just going to, if, to make sure, I'm gonna just take one and pass it. So, so this sheet is just the highlighted portion specifically talking about, and if you guys read it, you guys probably already seen it, but it's just to pinpoint directly where that is coming from. Thank you, Carmen, for all your work on this and upkeep with it. And then I have the map if you guys also want to review that. But it's just stating, so I'm going to just read what it says um, in the resolution under number seven, the Department of Boating and Ocean Recreation will remove the 72 hour mooring zone from Polka Bay and relocate it to another location, somewhere that is not within a conservation area and highly populated swimming area. Bilge pumps automatically pumps out water and could potentially pump hazardous chemicals from a vessel, from a vessel's hull and into the ocean. Boaters have been seen dumping buckets of human waste over the side and into the ocean. These hazardous chemicals and human waste pollute our ocean and swimming areas. Um, and just for reference, the Waianae Coast Neighborhood Board um, adopted this resolution by unanimous uh, vote on February 4th, 2021. But we're just, she's, they're just keeping us updated on what's currently um, being stated and moved and adjusted with the reso this far. So it's just for us to have a discussion and update on where it's at right now. Um, and Carmen, if you had anything to say? Regarding Hi everyone. Mahalo Chair. Um, I don't have anything to say other than what the proposal um, offered, which is to remove the buoys and mooring rules from Pokai Bay to no mooring at all. And um, this has come from years of community concern and ailments that they've, you know, reported to Department of Health and um, the board as well and our our uh, representatives um, of becoming ill. So I just kind of took it upon myself to create a proposal and offer it to the boating department so that they can act on it. So the proposal is um, in that mapping, you'll still have a zone A, which is reserved for swimming and bathing and zone B will be primarily for the canoe or outriggers, um, stand up paddleboarding, anything other than um, propelled motors that won't be allowed. Um, and the whole entire bay, which is considered a conservation area, will, will no longer um, be allowed to moor there. Mahalo. Does any board members have any questions on anything? Board member Lanford, and then we'll go to board member Kraft. Carmen, Carmen, get, um, is is there movement on on the proposal that you have to um, uh, reconfigure the Pokai Bay, uh, uh, what you call swimming area, as well as the paddling area? Uh, are you active with any body that's uh, uh, working on that project or working with you on that project? 
Thank you. Um, since our last um, site visit that we had at Pokai, the one that you attended, um, there has been no meeting. So this was my kuleana to come to the board and give an update. Also to have it printed in the paper so that we can spread it far and wide throughout the community that this is, you know, this is happening. This is taking place and um, they can offer feedback. So it is printed in our West side stories on page 4. mahalo nui to to them for, you know, picking this up for me and helping me out. Um, so this is part of what I had to do as part of the process and. Um, when I finish this neighborhood board um, update, I can go back to Dolbar and say, what is our next steps? And initially, Dolbar will have to do what you folks are doing. They have their own board and the proposal goes through them. They'll have all the information of community feedback and the groups that were involved um uh within creating this proposal and tweaking the proposal and it's still up for tweaking um that's why in the uh, west side stories uh you can email um the de voting department i can drop their information in the chat as well but we'll still continuing this process so the next step is um on dole bars Thank you. Thank you. Um, we as the um, uh, uh, Parks and Recreation Committee, uh, you know, welcome you and, you know, keep us abreast if we can help with any way. Thank you very much. Board Member Crab. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Carmen, for your um, words. You actually answered my question. Um, but I just wanted to take the time to thank you for all your hard work in this process. You know, it's been a long one. So. Thank you, and we support you along the way. Mahalo. Mahalo. Board member. Mahalo. Board member Perry, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Lanford hit it on the nose um, to be vetted through the Parks and Rec um, Committee. Also, if you could invite someone from Do, Do Care or Don Ching to come to the board. Um, so, to to guide us of how we can expedite this um, to have no motorized watercraft in Pukai Bay. Um, I, I know there have been many concerns and and there was like the concerns were like, no, we're not dumping any ways. Um, that, that was the reply when it was addressed about dumping um, human waste in Pukai Bay that um, they came back up, the water was fine, there was no bacteria. So we could have someone from Doke or Don Ching come to the board and speak on behalf of this resolution and continue to work with the Parks Department, the Co Parks Committee. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I, so I just wanted the clarification um, purposes. So we're not um, passing or seeing this. Re this reso has already been passed through neighborhood board on February 4th, two, 2021. Um, so she's just keeping us updated on where things is at, um, but we are not going to re um, go through the committees and everything because it's already at this level. She's just giving us an update on that. There is absolutely no mooring added to the reso. So there's yeah. no need for us to go back through being vetted back through committee again. Um, it's already been vetted and already been voted on by previous board. We're just keeping community and ourselves um, abreast on what's currently um, like what's current as far as the status. But HRS has not changed, so it's still in the process. So if Doke can come and speak to us to help us um, guide through the HRS, oh, yeah. that there's some laws that needs to be changed, not because the reason was passed, that the law is implemented. I, I can comment That's to that. How it works. That's not how it works. I can comment to that. So when I brought this up to Dolbar of what is the next steps, because they have authority to change the law, it it was just, this is in the process that I took the resolution, which is done, 2021, I took that section that um, Tiana read out loud, 
what how the law changes is not through the neighborhood board. It, the resolution was passed. I'm taking that. It goes to their board and they have their own meeting, which public will be invited. It will be announced. I will come back. I can personally write to chair when that meetings are because that's how they involve community. So this is not the end all be all. Let I, I'll state that again. This is not the end all be all. We can all submit our own comments if you'd like, but it will happen on Dolbar's board. Understood. Familiar Mahalo. with that process. Mahalo. Thank you. Mahalo. Uh, board member Vahilani. Hey Karen, happy new year. It's wonderful comment and good job with you. Um what you folks are doing, you know, and that resolution and you know sort of benefit of our our community and especially of that Bahipana. So Mahalo Nui. Good to see you, sis. Hello. Okay, mahalo. Um, board members, any other questions for Carmen? Thank you, Carmen, for attending tonight and for keeping us updated on on this process. Um, we will stay in communication. Um, let us know what else, if there's anything else that you might need from us, or if we do have to have some kind of discussion as far as you know, community engagement on our committee meetings and things like that. So, so mahalo um, and a happy new year. Mahalo, aloha. Aloha. Um, so moving right along to 5.5 .5, discussion on resolution 23-267. Um, and this is currently a resolution through our city council by our councilwoman Tupola. Um, and we are, I think, waiting on a hearing, but if did everybody get a chance to review? I know she brought this to us before, but we got to review it. And if we have any questions um, or if uh, Councilwoman would like to state anything, I do have hand raised. Uh, Board Member Vahilani, are you raising your hand for for the Resol 267? Oh, okay. Sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, so just for a little bit of background, first off, I just want to thank Carmen because actually I worked with her on this. But what had happened was she did bring it before this board, but there was no formal vote taken in support or opposition. So we had already had the parks hearing and that was kind of the stipulation that DPR gave is did the neighborhood board support it of which at the time they did. But there again, there was nothing formal that was written down that stated that the board supported it. Long story short. We did this exact, a very similar process when we did Ka'au. We wrote a resolve, we put line by line what we wanted Parks Department to fix, and actually it went well. So thank you to Auntie Kale and Uncle Austin, because that was the same process. Now we're doing this for the area that we all call sewers, but also that small little park that they call Lualuale too, which is kind of what they call like the extension of Pokai Bay. So the Pokai Bay um, Neighborhood Security Watch they are very vigilant in that area, but as most of you guys know, that bathroom, not the one that we see on Farrington, but if you take the side road, that bathroom needs to almost be like level to the ground. It's boarded up. People live in there. There's all kinds of things that happen in there except for using the bathroom. So long story short, if you guys could please take a position on this, and then once you guys do, then we're going to pass it in our committee in parks at the city council, and we're going to start the steps forward to either fund the improvements that need to be made, but basically get Department of Parks to be on the same page with us, because we're tired of seeing sewers look like that. That whole area, all the way from where the Wine Coast Comp is, wrap it all around, almost to Polkai Bay, that's the area that they call Lululele 1 and Lululele 2. Mahalo. And so just to add to um, what council member had addressed. So this resolution was brought to us by a few community members um, as well as Carmen and she had worked with Hawaiian affairs um, on the resolution. And so it was heard on a committee for neighborhood board. It unfortunately just never made it to the general board. Just so everybody is aware that we did see it through committee. Um, it just never got here. So now that we're here, I just want everybody to know it was vetted through committee and that's why I'm stating this. Um, community members and committee members had participated in this reso as well. So just clarifying that, um, but if any other discussions board members. I have a concern um, since you're up here, you know, um, the comfort station 
across the street there's a hydrant and there's an <laughs> engine block right next to the hydrant if that engine block can be removed so that hfd uh you know the um, there's no injury to any firemen in the dark like if they're responding there's can, yeah so yeah we can discuss offline and i'll have my um i'll have kiko go by and make sure that we know where and then we can make the steps to remove it okay thank you yep mahalo um okay so a motion i move to approve the resolution second okay so motion to adopt the resolution 267 no second oh made by board member crab seconded by board member vahilani any um any discussion okay uh, all in favor say aye chair yes uh, are we referring to resolution 23-267 yes correct okay for clarity thank you uh, just point of clarification. So I yes. think because it's a reso that we introduce on the city council, I think what you guys can do is take a position in support or opposition, but okay. not support the reso because you guys didn't write the reso. So yeah. So, so you guys support you the reso. Yeah. Sorry, my support? motion was to uh, support um, resolution two three two six seven. Thank you um, for the for introduction in the Honolulu City Council. Mahalo. Somebody to second. Oh, can we have another second? Yes. Second. 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 Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing none. Um, I'm just gonna go by voice vote. Um, all in favor, say aye. Aye. So that motion passes. We support the no, motion. I mean, Perry, no, okay. you just, you're asking for support. Okay. Now you have to ask for nays and abstention. Okay. Perry, okay. nay, I will follow, I will follow through to council hearing on this. Okay. I will Thank make my, my support at the time at the council, full council meeting or committee meeting. So Perry, no. Okay. Any abstentions? Okay, so motion passes. Excuse me. So seven and one. And thank you. Congratulations, Carmen. Um, okay, so 5.6 shut down Red Hill coalition discussion vote signing on Rezo if voted on. Um, and we have Rebecca Garrison and Susan Gorman Chang present in the room. Um, we have the Rezo. It was emailed. Did everybody get a chance to review the Rezo? Any questions? Yeah, this is this is. Long done, and just to clarify as well, it's just a formality that we are hearing it, whether we support or we don't support, but this has already been processed and is already currently happening. Um, but it's just to say if one neighborhood board supports it or doesn't. I make a motion that we support the resolution to shut down Red Hill. In second. Okay, so a motion. Uh, made by board member Vahilani to um, support sh the shutdown Red Hill resolution, and it was seconded by board member Endo. Any discussion? Yes. Um, there should be a discussion on this because this um, event, when this actually came out, it was in the process of it. However, it has actually been shut down. It's actually in the process of defueling, and so in that reso. It also states that the Board of Water Supply should be um, reimbursed for their time. However, the federal government supersedes Board of Water Supply's knowledge and fresh water in our system since they actually made our water system in Hawaii. Thank you. Um, any, any other board members? OK, 
Okay, so calling for the question. All those in favor to support um, the shutdown Red Hill Rezo, say aye. Aye. Very aye. 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 Voice vote, please. Okay, so it, any nays? One, one nay. Yeah, Donna Barnes. Um, any abstentions? Okay, so motion passes. Seven eyes, one nay. And um, Rebecca, this is the rezo, and it's already typed out with our wine and neighborhood board. Um, so thank you for your process. I know it's been a long one, especially with our board. Yeah. Mahalo. You can, you can state that if you want to, you can go ahead and state that for the record. We just want to say thank you so much for your support and the entire island support of this resolution. This is a historic event. This is the first ever island wide supported resolution in the history of the neighborhood board. So thank you so much. And we look forward to working with you folks in the future as well. Thank you. Mahalo, Rebecca. Right on, Rebecca. I have a community member that. I'm neither for or against the uh, radio thing, but what I am, what I do want to see is I support what board member Perry said earlier, and this board should focus on things that are in our 96792. That should be our priority. Mahalo. Okay, so going to 5.7. Um, okay, this is strictly pertaining to the sudden changes and everything that our board has is going through currently or has gone through. And if there's any discussion or thoughts um, that anybody would like to share or, or discuss, board members. Board member Perry, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. I know 2024 is election year. And it's, it's no secret that neighborhood board um, members um, run for um, elected or paid elected office. Um, they're either running or they work for somebody in the, at the state capitol. Um, is is no surprise that um, some board members utilize the board to um, progress their campaign um, election in the way of the neighborhood board. It is no surprise, um, but I just think it's unethical to um, use the board as um, a leverage to be to get a paid elected official position. I I, I don't think it's illegal, I, but I think it's unethical. Board members, not in only ours, but island wide, um, utilize the neighborhood board to promote their um, career, and that's my concern. Again, I'm not sure if it's illegal, but to me, it's just unethical. Thank you. Mahalo. Um, any, anybody? It's particularly just with the transitions that we've recently endured, if anybody has any questions or concerns regarding that particular topic, as far as officers and things like that. That's, that's what the discussion is for. Um, it, who, who, which, um, like, who are you addressing? Are you addressing it like yes. me or to NCO? Like who, who, like, who's the question for? Yes. So my question is, is, I'm not sure who actually would take this. Yes. Yeah, so I'm actually asking a standard questions to either the chair or Logan. Um, is our old chair still a board member or is he 
Okay, so he is a board member and he has the option to come back as a board member. Thank you. Excuse me, Chair. Can you hear me? Hi, Lloyd. Yes. Maybe I can re I can respond to that. Please. Um, thank you so much. Lloyd Yoninaka, Executive Secretary for the Neighborhood Commission Office. Uh, first, I want to tell everyone a uh, Happy New Year, and I hope everyone had a very safe New Year. Um, with regard to that question, uh, Mr. Your previous chair was removed as chair. He continues to be a board member. And that removal as chair is only good until June 30th of this year, 2024. At that point, every year, the neighborhood boards reelect their officers every year, not every two years, every year. And at that point, if he chooses to run for chair and you guys elect him, then he will be the chair again. But right now he is on the board and he continues to be on the board. He has not been removed from the board. Mahalo for the clarification. Thank you, Lloyd. Go ahead, board member Lambert. So um, since I got you on the screen there, um, mm -hmm. he is, is he still a board member uh, as yeah. far as the uh, neighborhood commission is, is um, uh, involved with it? So we elect to continue to keep the board exactly how we have it, and that is no problem with the the NCO guys with the neighborhood board commission, right? Um, what do you mean keep it exactly how it is? Um, well, um, who's Jana the has chair? Been doing a great job, you know, on, on what she's been doing. So we just well, continue yeah. to. Yeah, the, the, the question right now is, work. yeah, the question right now is that, okay, so that Jonathan was removed. If um, at that point, the vice chair assumes the role of chair for at least this meeting, and and if you don't elect another chair, um, the vice chair will continue to run the meetings, continue to act as a chair. Um, so I, you know, if if you decide to to elect a chair again, then whoever that you elect is is going to be chair. Uh, if you decide, the question I think sometimes uh, that may come up is. If you decide to elect Jonathan again, uh, I would ask that you respect the commission's decision. Uh, I and I, and technically, I can't even tell you how, how the commission would would look at it. Um, but again, the the removal as chair is good for six months only. It's the rest of this term. So at that point, if you put them back, then you put them back. You know, if you vote them back in, you vote them back in. But right now, technically, um, you, the, the 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 chair you have right now, the vice chair assumes the role as the chair. Thank you. Until until you guys change. Mahalo, Lloyd. Uh, everybody, good. On that topic, okay. Um, thank you so much for being here and answering um, that. Tiana, could I say one more thing? Go ahead. Um, I just want to congratulate uh, you and whoever helped you put the Christmas tree together for the Kapolei Lake City lights. I thought that was great, and I know you guys got plans for next year. And and I think um, you know combining with with Nana Cooley, I think will be really really nice. In fact, we get we get all the all the board down in that area in the, on the Leeward Coast um, on the west side to to put up a tree. I think that'll be great. I would like to see a neighborhood board tree you know, more than anything else. So, um, but but thank Not you very much. display. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you and thank you for all the people that helped you and helped uh, put that put that uh, tree up. Mahalo. Yes, that was definitely a collaboration of community. So it was beautiful. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, so the next agenda item is 5.8 um, presentations with Mark or with Whale. Um, the presenter is Mark. Hi, Mark. And then this is for the Passman and Cook. 
development. I'm sorry. Um, do you do you have it like on an email? Do you have like your presentation like on an email? Could you um just get it to our neighborhood assistant, please? Because we have to be able to view it online as well. Mahalo. Um, excuse me. Uh, my name is Mark Allen, the Chief Biologist of Whale Environmental Services, uh, LLC in Kuhuku. Um, I had two tonight under Ordinance 23-4. Um, homeowners with single family or dual houses can go a little bit faster in the SMA process. And so they've moved the consultation with neighborhood boards to what they call the pre-consult period. Uh, so before we actually go into the SME application, the neighborhood board gets an early look at what's going on on a particular piece of property. Um, this is the Passman property. Um, it's David and Bridget. Um, what's done now is what used to be called an environmental assessment, it's now called an environmental disclosure document, and it's in support of the written statement for the later on SME application. Um, if we could keep proceeding. Um, so. Um, this is done according to the ordinance of the different statutes and chapters of the um, Hawaii state laws. Uh, the proposed action is now a demolition of the existing building and a replacement of a new structure. Originally, it was going to be a remodel, but the passengers do international travel, and while they were away, the property was severely vandalized to a point of non repair. So they're going to demolish now and replace the building. Um, pretty much on his exact same footprint. Uh, if we can keep on going, I keep on going. Um, so as I said, it has to meet these particular guidelines, the statutory conditions. Um, we don't meet any of the special conditions of using county lands. We're not in the Waikiki district. Um, we're so, not. Can I interrupt real quick, sir? Yes. Um, I'm actually looking at the property zone that you gave, and there was no existing. Uh, building on that property. It was a vacant land. That's right. what was submitted to us. I think you're looking at the cook one. The next one. Next. Okay, go ahead, sir. Move on. Okay. I'm sorry to keep moving up. Um, so the trigger move up to the bold section. Um, this is triggered. It's over a five hundred thousand dollars, um, so it becomes an SMA major. Um, the intent of construction is somewhere around seven hundred fifty, eight hundred fifty thousand dollars. Sorry, sir. I looked at the Cook property. That's why I looked at the tax key map, and there is no property that actually built that property that actually is presented is what used to be a access to that beach. So in your report of four hundred ninety five pages. It stated it was nothing prior to that, but yet you provided no updated survey of the property itself. I'm not presenting the cook one right now. Okay, which one are you presenting, sir? I'm sorry. Pass the passman. Passman? I never seen that one. I looked through all 495 pages. Do you have a, a photo of the uh, passman property? Yes, if we can. Can you bring that up, up please? I uh, go past the summary. Sorry, sir, this was not presented to us. We only, the Cook property okay. was presented, not this property. This is the property here from the DPP site. Um, as you can see, it's okay. has a structure on it. So in the future, can you bring forward, we don't want to use DPP's photos because of their inaccuracy, um, their property lines that is actually being displayed. And you see you shaking your head, you agree with that. 
So we need to see actual survey flags of the property in the future. There's, there are survey plans in this. Okay, in that one there, because in the Cook one, there was none. And it should, should have been, but, but we'll see. Um, can you keep on going? Um, so that's the proposed new structure um, on the lot. It's pretty much in the same exact footprint as before. The honest 40 foot setback from the shoreline setback. Keep on going. Um, that's the erosion transit for the area. As you can see, it's in the negative. Um, so, so. Sir, just for another clarification, this isn't in our neighborhood board section. This is in the, you're, you're presenting this property to the wrong board. These properties that you're present, this property itself needs to be presented to the Nanakuli board since it's in their district. Okay. So by coming to us doesn't satisfy the, your requirement from coming to the board, just, just for clarification, because this is the wrong, this is the wrong district you're presenting it to. This has happened in the past, and in the past, the presenter had used our board for an area that was not in our district, and we yes. will not have that again, sir. I see. The neighborhood commission, number one, gave us the wrong email address to send a request, and thankfully, Tiana um, finally contacted us. We had asked for this back in August. The neighborhood commission sent us to your board. Right. Um, so, so the other asked, one that is that is the property he's talking about that has no property, the beach access, that is our district. Okay. But this one that you're currently showing is in Maili. Okay. And and that's out of our district line. So respectfully. Yeah, we'll just stop this one. Okay, but that. we also didn't get follow up questions on the Passman property that we had when this was presented. Um, in November, I believe. I resent it right. I had sent yeah. it originally in August, but I guess email. The so we were hoping to get clarifications on those questions that that was brought to um, who presented the last time. This was the last time. Um, so last in November, there was there was. But we was looking through the slides. A lady was answering the questions, though. Only, only, Cook, only Cook property. Yeah. So that's what we thought that that was the same thing. We didn't know you were presenting a whole new yeah. property because it was sent to us both then yeah. as well. So we already knew Cook. We wasn't going to see we, because we that was an our. We can't touch the Cooley and set one up for the past one, so we can just stop this one. Okay. Um, is there any way that there's questions that can be answered for the property that was presented to us, though? Like, is there any follow up on that or no for Cook property? I don't know who. Who presented anything for Cook? We've not presented Cook yet at all. That's what was actually. I had four hundred ninety-five pages. Right, but the, um, this is a presentation me. to the neighborhood board. That's no, that, that's the EDD that goes out. No, this was for that would be announced. This was on November's agenda. Yes, Passman and Cook was on November's agenda, and it was heard. There was a ten-minute slot for that. Oh, and who presented it? I, we will go back into our minutes and look. In fact, okay. I have it right here. It wasn't you know. your company, though. This it, is another. It was company. well. It was. It was the same documents. But but I wasn't here to make a presentation. Gabrielle Sumner. Okay, cut. The whale email was the same one with yeah, the same information. So when we got the request for Passman and Cook, I was like, oh, okay. So I thought you were coming with clarification on the property because there was a lot of unanswered questions in that meeting. I don't even know who that person is, so I don't understand. Okay, that's even more concerning now. Right. Okay, well, unfortunately, sorry, we, we aren't able to okay. well, to um, no do anything with this particular property. Um, and I can, I can get you the email for our, Great. our non board. So you don't have the Cook property at all? Then? I have a presentation for it, but if one's already been done, I don't know who that person was. And okay. I didn't make the presentation, and we're a very small company. Yeah, so, so yeah, can, you, can you produce for the Cook property? Please yeah. talk about the Cook property only, please. Sorry, just clarification. It wasn't November, it was October. Thank you, Board Member Perry. Um, 
Um, so I don't understand if someone else presented this. This is a, a different, you know, this is something we've worked on now for probably three or four months, five months. Um, we did not make a presentation to your board. This is the first time I've ever been to your board. Um, as I said, every member of my company is a family member. Um, so we don't have outside employees except for my wife, my two daughters, and we have a, a, a GIS consultant. So this is the vacant land that you were talking about. Um, this is on Farrington Highway. Um, same thing as before. We do everything according to the laws. Um, we keep on going. We probably should go down to some of the photos and the slides. Tax map key. This is the plat map um, for the property. Keep on going down. This is the uh, soil map for the property. Um, as you can see, it's been used in the past for people even parking on the beach. Um, on Google Earth, it even shows people parking on the beach um, on the times. We keep on going. Um, this is the shoreline. Um, this is the sea level rise, the 3.2. The blue represents how far it comes up onto the property. It does not come up to the property of where the proposed structure is. Um, so it's outside the 3.2 sea level rise. If we keep on going, um, this is what's called the, um, it's passive flooding. It's similar to what happens if it rains up in the mountains and it comes down or it floods. So that's what they could call passive flooding. If we keep on going. Um, it is in the SMA district, the entire lot's in the SMA. So that's why you go through an SMA application process. We keep on going. Um, this is the high wave and erosion line. The red line is the um, point of what is expected in 70 years to reach for shoreline erosion. Again, just the actual structures further up on the lot. We keep on going. Um for correction, that erosion line actually does come up to there already during our storm sessions. Right. So just for clarification on that. Yeah, this is university wise projection. I but we the local yeah. people who live here who played on that I, beach and so we know where the area is. Yeah. Please understand that. I do. Um, um if we keep on going. Um this is the uh, flood hazard map. And as you can see, the velocity extreme is the orange, the uh, AE and X are the blue and the yellow. Um, so most of the property's got to be flood proof, certain elevation, be risen, so it's going to be up on columns um, in order to meet the flood, flood zone elevations. We keep on going. This is the Sasami map. As you can see, it's not in the extreme zone, but it is in the Sasami zone. Um, so um, that has to be addressed by DPP, and again, the structure has to be flood proof, tsunami proof, hurricane proof, um, all those different structures. We keep on going. Um, this is the, the USGS map it shows the soil classifications by USGS. They sometimes differ from NRCS, so the soil people in the USGS don't necessarily agree on soil type. Um, we keep on going, and this is again now goes to the NRCS. So, one place they call it beach sands, another place they call it marine sands, another place they call it jacka sands. Um, all these things have to be addressed. We um, usually consult with OHA and Waimea Valley on cultural aspirations. Uh, Susan Liebel now with Sheppy will not review a application SM, until it reaches the final application. She has over 600 EAs and EDDs in process. So in these early stages, she waits to review until later. And we keep the developed uh, cultural impact assessment. Um, OHA has always been very good working with us. We've actually been consultants to OHA in the past. Um, so we'll continue to work on those aspects. This is what's called a NOAA map. Um, NOAA has a prediction for a six foot sea rise in the future. Um, and so, again, as you can see, the six foot rise is actually even below the 3.2 sea level rise. Um, so that's what they call the surge map, which, as you correctly mentioned, um, 
my wife's from Nana Cooley, so she's lived here, and they used to worry about the fires coming from the hill and the floods coming from the ways, and you can't get out of here. Thank and you. So, um, so we keep on going. Uh, this is what they call the economic loss. So they rate these now according to um, what they feel the property in the general area is valued at. And this is in the, I think it's like the 10 to $20 million range. So those properties in that medium color yellow uh, would be affected monetarily in that region to that extent. If we keep on going. We just want to make sure that we, the taxpayers, will not be responsible right. for showing up there. Yeah. Their shoreline that is lost during time. Yeah. Um, this is um, another flooding map. This is a different type where they actually measure the amount of um, not sea level rise for the climate change, what it could potentially flood. And you can see it's a little bit south of the property, or east actually. Um, so we keep on going. Oh, this is the first of the hurricane surge maps. Um, so in Hawaii, in the mainland, they do categories one through five. In Hawaii, they only do one through four. Um, so as you can see, um, that little circle is the site at the category one. It doesn't, hurricane surge does not reach. We keep on going. Uh, category two, the same thing yet again. Category three, you start to see it creeping in. It's just below the property at this point. And by four, as much of the wine is covered, it's going to be on a category four storm. There, that's actually wrong, the maps, and hopefully they correct that. Yeah. Uh, this is the zoning map for the property. Um, it's urban zoned. Um, so it's just the city zoning map. And believe me, those property lines and those maps bug me more than they probably bug you. So we try to correct them as much as we can um, when we do the presentations. We keep on going. If we can start wrapping okay, it. Okay, so, sir, so this property is actually designed for a 6,000-square-foot home, uh, two stories. Um, we'll have uh, ADU as well as built-in. You're right. saying it's going to be on foundations because it's sand. Um, I haven't seen any report the type of foundations that you're going to do. It said padding, but not actual footing foundation, right. how far deep it was going to go. At the end of this is the building plans, and on the building plans, they have the structural foundations, and they, okay. they should be in that ADD. Okay, yeah, that's what I was trying to look for, what type of, um, how deep they were going to go, because in that report, it says that water tables go about 12 feet. So according to that size, uh, that structural that is being built, it needs to go at least 12 feet plus. Yeah. Because it's on sand, correct? Well, they can do what they stable. call spread of footers too. Yeah, so What they definitely. prefer in Jack of Sands, especially the cultural people, they don't want you to dig too deep. They want to do spread of footers. Spread of footers, yeah, correct. And so with uh, surface grade beams, and so that's normally what's done in these type of situations. Okay. So you avoid digging too deep into yep. the jackets and the EV. Uh, so I so what I need to see in this report, then, sir, is the actual surveys of the property. Okay. Because right now, what you like you said, DPP bugs you because it's not accurate. And so when it's presented here, it's not showing the exactly where the property is being what the building is being proposed to the actually property line to the actual uh, what do you call surge uh, surge. Uh, surge line on the area also um some modifications need to be required to be done on their uh, building because on this r10 property which i don't think it actually can be approved for this area with this size house because it's supposed to be a small footprint home in an r10 but this is a giant home yeah. this is six thousand square feet um their actually front yard is supposed to be 25 feet but in the mapping itself in the way it's designed it's only 20 feet so which means they have to Put five feet back on that and that building, which puts them even further closer to the surge line. Also, it's supposed to be at least 25 feet of the backyard as well. Okay. Right. So just need to make sure that is done as well as the uh, gate openers. I, and I think DPP will see that as well. Your gate's going to be opening into public um, impediment. So it needs to be changed either to a rolling gate or swing inwards to the property. Gate, yeah. We'll um, we'll check with the architect. On, the, on it and see whatever changes need to be made. It's one of the reasons why we do a pre-consult is so we can get this input from you guys that what you're looking for. And that's why this will then continue to develop um, into uh, um, what they call a written statement. So then the written statement goes in with the SM application 
and any of these changes that are needed, that's why we get the input. So we thank you for it. I appreciate it. Your report was 495 pages. I went through it. it. Took me two nights to go through it and actually pinpoint everything that was, you know, that was questionable on this thing. And and a lot of the stuff. The first time, I'm not sure that person presented showed us that map, and that was a concern because it's not truly showing um, that area because uh, it doesn't meet the sustainability of the wine assistance, uh, and Macaw sustainability. Also, that property itself, the city has said that not building any more on the on the um, on the Mackay side, which is means the ocean side, and you know what I mean. And that is a huge property that's less than a less than 150 feet away from the actual shoreline. Right. You know what I mean. So that's where the concern is. And also, the report said there's no um, beach access. That property was never used as beach access for 70 years. That property was used as beach access, sir. I meant defined beach access. Beach. Well, you actually have a defined beach access. That was a beach access. That was the only but beach it's, access. But it's not on the zoning maps. That's the problem. Okay. So I understand that. You see, the thing is, you guys are all going, I'm going in by grandfathered. We have what is called a grandfather rule, where it's used by over a certain amount of years and is actually considered public access. Now, the developer came in, bought it five years ago, put up a wall. All of a sudden, it was no longer a beach access. But we had no public input on this. So that now understand that, okay? So define as public access. When it's defined in the before this, even before this state was a state itself, that was a beach access. Okay, so that's where I'm coming from. I'm talking about way before you guys put in all this paperwork and put a big wall there that says, oh no, it's no longer beach access. It has always been a beach access, sir. And I will, I will fight on that because you know why? My grandparents was the first to buy from uh, Oahu Sugar back there. And so that was the area when I was growing up. That's the beach all of us went to learn how to surf. So that's why I, you know what I mean? I, I appreciate you coming and I understand the work you're putting into, um, but this property is huge. You know what I mean? It is huge and the footprint that is, is it's concerning with the footprint and what it's gonna be used for. Sure. You know, all I can tell you is Maconi Farms and Cuckoo is a 1300 page document. So you're lucky with 495. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a fun project. Um, so that's essentially some of the key points. If you go down to the very end, I think I have some of the building plans in there. Um, the CZM charts in there, um, what's the thing? Um, so as you can see, they've started the layout. Um, the things that you've mentioned, I'll bring up the points about the gate has to turn inward or be rolling. I'll bring up the point of the 25 feet. I'll make sure these things are all incorporated as they update these plans. Um, yeah, so these are actual survey plans along with the shoreline survey. Um, so um, this is what would be um, developed even further. That's why we come to you is for those recommendations. And I don't know who presented before, but it wasn't my company. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Or? Uh, so what we do with the neighborhood boards is as we make changes, as you request, and also this goes out to about 20 different other agencies. We take all their comments and the changes and we send it back to you. We won't come and present again, but we'll send you saying we made this change and this change and this change and this change for your recommendations. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll have to call the neighborhood commission, tell them first they sent us to the wrong email to ask for the meeting, and then they sent us to the wrong board. So it, it, we'll just, we'll go because over. Because everything's Farrington Highway, it's it's hard, like if they don't live out here, they wouldn't know that that's not our district line. So, yeah. Yeah. so I mean, it's it's, Understandable. I mean, not an excuse, but definitely yeah. I could see the mix up. But that's what they tell us to do is go just... to the neighborhood commission office and we just go to where they tell us to go. So we'll tell them to correct it for next time. Right, thank you. Thank you. And yes, keep us updated, please. Okay. Thank you. Um, I believe I have a question online. Board member Perry. Go ahead, board thank member. You, Chair. Uh, I was just wondering if he um Send letters to the adjacent residents, informing them of this potential project. 
Um, yes, um, Iris Hu is the Kaha side owner, and I can't remember. It's some investment trust owns the property on the east side. Um, so we have heard from Iris. Um, matter of fact, we had talked to her originally. She's looking at developing her property, but she's gone with a different consultant. And um, we sent her a copy of that EDD um, so that she has it. It's our responsibility to make sure the abutters are notified. Um, I'll give you a highlight of some of the agencies we sent to. We sent the fire department, police department, OHA. It's just standard. They're just standard procedure. Yeah. Um, thank you for coming, but you know, please don't don't use this presentation um, informing DPP that you got our support just became just because you came and did a presentation. Okay, do no, not I, use our board yeah. claiming we Enough. support your project. Okay. Right. Yep. I um I'm not asking for a support or a denial at any well, point. Part of it is a presentation, and that's all you need. So do not twist words around that we support this project, which which I don't. I'm speaking for myself. I don't, and I don't believe you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mahalo, Perry, board member Perry. Um, I see board member Vahilani. Go ahead. Yeah, Mark. Um, so in your in your presentation, you was you're mentioning for the culture aspect that you had that your company or your yeah, you're coming in and reached out to OHA and there was another person. Is that true? Um, we always talk to Waimea Valley because they have quite a few cultural and we're, we're an offshore company. So we do most of our work on offshore and between OHA and Waimea Valley, there's a lot of cultural specialists. And then during this process of doing the CIA, we um, go to OHA traditionally and ask them, can they recommend a local Waianae person to consult with on the historical background. So we've got that request into them at this point. And the minute they tell us who to talk to, we will talk to those people. So do you folks have a, have, a, have a recommendation from OHA for a cultural expert in YNI? Um, it's Kio Alana who always does it for us. Kimo Kio Alana. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we do, we do for the Nalama Kakui, we do the energy audit work for OHA. Um, we work for Miles Nakamura for many years, um, so we yeah, know so a lot of people at OHA. Kimo is from Nanakuli, then he he would have he would have let you folks know that at other presentation is in Nanakuli, not Y and I. So I will. Yeah. I'll I'll, I'll bring up the name of the uh, commission. <laughs> the steering right. from. Uh, Chair, can I ask a question now? Kale Wilbur, go ahead. Um. Would it be possible to uh, motion just so that we go on record that uh, we do not support this, so that we we are on record that we that this board does not support? Are you putting a motion on the floor? Can I put the motion in? As as board members, you you have free will to to function as well, board I'm members. Well, I'm putting a motion in that we uh, vote that. Um, our, our uh, standing on this position, um, whether we support or not support. I second the non-support. So a motion on the floor to take a vote on support or not support um, this project by Kalei Wilbur, board member Kalei Wilbur, and it was seconded Seconded by, by for non -support. support. And any discussion? Go ahead, board member Crab. Um, I would just like to say beforehand, I'm going to be planning to abstain from this vote just because there's a lot of confusion around this situation, whether or not this is was previously presented or not. I just feel like we, because of the situation that we are in with tonight, I just feel like we just haven't had enough time to really delve into your project because of the confusion that was in place. So I just wanted to add that, that this just needs, I think just needs more time to be um, investigated. Thank you. Um, can I add to that? Um, the, ahead, the gentleman um, um, said that whether he's moving forward, whether or not, I just wanted to go on record 
so that um, they they cannot use our uh, us as a board that we influenced it in any way. Just our standing as a community, as a collective, whether or not we support or not support this. Um, because his next, he did his presentation and he's moving on to his next step. And all I wanted to do was just go on on record that we um, we we have a stand as far as our board is concerned. Thank you. Any other discussion? May I ask a clarifying question? What? Um, since this was under board business and not act as under an actual presentation, would this count as a presentation for DPP? Um, so because when I got the request, I thought it was a follow up request to the the re the presentation that was previously presented in October. Um, and that's why it's under board business for us to have had this discussion. I thought we were going to be clarifying the questions that we had from the previous um, presentation, um, which is why it's under board business. So uh, that if that answers your question. Technically, we already had the presentation, uh, but he's stating now that he doesn't know who that person yeah, is. Yeah, that, that's a conflict so, because he is not, he doesn't, uh, he uh, he is the owner of right. the Wales company. Right. So whoever presented in October did not represent this individual. But it was he's the same the emails that says Wales on it. I understand, but he's yeah. the owner who's so, saying, so is a conflict of interest. So right. this would be its first presentation that we can't move forward on because we don't have enough um, right. information on it. Yes. Yeah, sir. I mean, so there was some confusion with you and, and the two months ago. So. Um, so that's why we're having the discussion. So the discussion for me is is um, not to support as well because of the fact that um, there is some um, illegitimacy in the in the planning, um, and and has been recognized by you yourself. Um, you know, well, we're so, very concerned if somebody's representing our company. We're yeah, very concerned about that. Exactly. So, uh, and so that is that is where we're at right now. Thank you, sir. You know, we try to make that as detailed as possible. That's why it is as lengthy as it is, um, so that we try to answer as many questions as we have. If someone used that material and got their hands on and tried to make a presentation, they didn't research it like we did. So that's all I can say. Yeah, and I, and I believe because when that wall went up, the, that owner of that wall basically said the same thing. He doesn't care what the people has to say. And that's why, you know what I mean? And that's why it's deemed in your documents that was never a um, public access because that person who built that wall, the first buyers, they didn't care what we had to yeah. say. So I do appreciate you coming out here and presenting. Yeah, thank you. Um, board member, hey, Chair. do you have anything? Uh, uh, Chair, thank you. It, it's just, um, it, it's just, it's just alarming or uh, it's just disturbing that a consultant will come to a board and present without being um, hired by someone I can't, I don't believe that. Uh, maybe they fired the consultant, but I don't believe any consultant who is being paid to come to a neighborhood board and not represent that project. I don't believe that. Thank you. Thank you for your statement. Um, board member Bailani, did you have? Yeah, um... yeah Chair, I, I remember, I remember that um, when that person came to the meeting, so it's on, it's on a level, so if you don't, can go back to a little station and 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 watch that presentation, and we can find out because I remember that when that happened in October. So it is alarming, and yeah, but I'm not in support of it either. So if we're going to take a vote, you got my vote. All I can say is we were hired, I believe, in July. We wrote it up in August, and we never presented to this board before. So no one from my company, and I doubt very much whoever presented had that type of lengthy document in front of you. And that's why we send it to you in advance so that you have it. And we take what you people say seriously. I'm a former permit coordinator for the rail. I did over 12,000 permits for that very controversial project. Um, I've been a selectman, a state representative. Um, so I try to do things by the book, just so you know. Yeah, thank you. I even bring up the rail better. <laughs> <laughs> Board member and Dole. I've seen a lot of no votes about the rail, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, since the motion was made, I mean, you guys can, can go through it, but it's. 
I'm, I'm just going to say it's stupid <clears throat> because we don't have the right to tell this guy if, if he can and cannot build, <clears throat> right? If we, I mean, we, we can do, do what you guys want, but <clears throat> I, I, I'm going to tell you guys this. <clears throat> Our church when is going to get built with one wine iron board. And uh, Pastor King, I was on, you be on the board, and almost everybody on the Wine Eye board said, We don't need another church. We don't need another Wine Eye, another church. I, I'm just wondering how people would vote now that our church has been doing what it's been, it's been doing. Yeah. So be careful when, when you vote for, for a, a property. You have no business to tell. I mean, you can do what you want, but I, I'm just saying it. <laughs> They're all, all they are required to do, our church, all, all we was required to do is tell the board, the community, we, we're going to do this development. Um, Sometimes we go beyond what our duties are, so I, I, I have to, I have to say it. Mom, uh, all I can say in response to that is, we're big believers in keeping the neighborhood boards informed. That's why you're a neighborhood board. So even though we don't have to on SMA minors because there is no public hearing for minors, we will send you any SMA minor we do in the region, just so that you're kept in the loop, and we think that's the way it should be. We can talk to Kathleen and offshore neighborhood board. She gets every single one of our SMA minors, um, even though we don't have a hearing for it, just so that it's your community. Um, you know, so in your community, everything that goes on, I think you should know. Mahalo. Okay, so calling for the question. Um, can we can we do Can you clarify what the motion is one more time? Uh, okay, so the motion on the floor is to support or not support this project. Um, Mr. Wilbur, you want to read your um, your motion, Mr. Wilbur? Uh, I noticed that my motion has a little confusion in there. Um, to clarify it, um, uh, the motion should have stated um, support. I just want to say we have a right. We have a right to protect our community. Whether they come in or not, we have a right to hold, to take a position, yes or no. There's no confusion. This this project uh, is our community. How many times project come here? We don't get informed or they support whether we like it or not. Okay, like the homeless situation, right? Whether we like it or not, whether we say no, it still comes. So we have a right. This is our community. We invest our time and our life here. But we have a right to go on record how we feel yes um the clarifying statement was that the motion on the floor was to not support this project but what i stated was to support or not support so the motion on the floor is to not support this project and that's what we're going to vote on if the motion uh, is to not support this project i second okay so the motion is already on the floor. We're just restating the motion so that Jeff can take the, the vote. Roll call, thank you. Okay, so the motion on the floor for agenda item 5.8 is to not support the project. This is gonna go in the order that I do have on my motion sheet, uh, member Crab. And if you, when you do your vote, please do it into the microphone so it's easier for the minutes and for the video record, please. Board member Crab. Abstain. Endo? Donovan? 
yes, I did not support this project because it out it does not fall in line with the sustainability. Lanford? I don't support. Perry? No, not support. Wahilani? Ole. Clay Wilbur? Not support. Tiana Wilbur? Um, so I just want to state for the record, it, I am not support and it's because of the confusion and things that has been um, presented right now. And so I just don't feel right. Like if we can see the process, because I don't want to interfere with anything. But of course, as a community member, I want what's in the best interest of of my my Moku. So um, yeah. right now I cannot support. Okay, so the motion is passed for the board to take a stance to not support the building project. Um, before we do move on, I would do want to echo board member Endo. So he did he did state what was correct that his um sorry, sir, what was your name one more time? Uh, Mark Holland. So his so his responsibility is just to come present. The project's obviously already been approved. So just his presentation, again, board member Endo said we cannot prevent him from building or their company from building, but this, the motion was to take a stance to not support the building. I just wanted to clarify that. Mahalo. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. Mahalo, no way. Um, Okay, so moving on on our agenda, item number six. Um, so Mayor Rick Blangiardi's representative, Director Don Apuna, um, she is currently not here tonight. Um, she did give me courtesy ahead of the meeting. Um, and then we're moving on to Councilwoman. Uh, if you guys would like um, mayor's report, could you guys please come see us after so we can forward you an email of the report. Um, but we're gonna move on with the agenda for the sake of time. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. thank you. Aloha board members, aloha community, everyone who's here. Happy New Year, happy New Year, everybody. Um, so I gave everyone a newsletter. There's a few things in there. Uh, it is a little older. It covered the town hall that we had last month. I did give the reso, which we already took a vote on. I also have the one pager for the two game room bills that we covered at the town hall. We're hoping that it's gonna be scheduled for a hearing next week. I will email everyone. If we get the hearing and zoning, please come and testify. These are the two bills that will crack down on game rooms in our community. I also gave a flyer for a Stop Human Trafficking Conference. I'll be running this from February 5th through the 8th. It is going to be on all the islands, um, Maui, Kona, Hilo, and then Oahu. So we are bringing the National Center on Missing and Exploited Children. There's a representative there. On each of the islands, I'll have the PD, the prosecutors, Homeland Security, as well as the speakers. And on every day that we have the conference at night, we'll be having a showing of the documentary called Surviving Sex Trafficking, of which one of the survivors from the documentary will be here for the conference. And then as well, I did send an email to everyone about the upcoming Homeless Symposium on February 3rd. So please, if you can attend, it is going to be our fourth cohort of R3 starting in February. And so I just want to brief everyone on all of the moving parts, the progress that we've made, the new things that we've started to incorporate. And this specific homeless symposium is gonna be very much workforce related. How are we getting the businesses involved? How are we making it easier for people to apply, get jobs, get into, um, get income? So it's a big part of what I do for the homeless outreach is not just the, oh, let's get into a house, but let's get a job because often, when you do get a job, it's not just about the income, it's about feeling purpose, contributing to your community, contributing to your family. We've helped a lot of people get jobs, and I want to thank those people. In fact, Chris is one of the employers that we send people to. We send a lot of people to YNI store. Coquitos hired one of the homeless individuals. Anybody who will, I call them directly. Um, ANG, I call them directly and ask them, hi, will you hire this person? They, they are homeless, but will you give them a shot? So I want to thank those employers who do give them the shot, no matter 
what their circumstance is. So the group that we're bringing for the homeless symposium is called Switchpoint. They are a group out of Utah, but they specifically have created micro businesses for homeless where they are the owners and they are, that is the way that they make money. So I felt like it was a good thing for our community since we are very much into, you know, responsibility, kuleana, making sure that people take ownership. So those are my announcements and I'm open for questions. Um, Board Member Perry, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Oh, you know. Thank you, Chair. Um, Council Member, thank you for um, making awareness of human trafficking. January 11 is the National Human Trafficking Awareness. The month of January is about human trafficking. Also, um, you know, now the hourly wage is $14, so that may be more attractive for those that want to get a job and maybe get a, their GED. Even to get a security job, you need your GED or high school diploma. So that could be another possibility. And I think Cedar Church, that was their part of their mission to give jobs to the unsheltered people that lived in Kalihi and to hire them, shelter them, give them some sort of training. Um, so, you know, that that's an upside of that project. So thank you for all your help and your, your efforts. You have your PhD now? Are you I now do. a doctor? Huh? Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. Thank you, doctor. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, doctor. I have a PhD in music, guys. I can sing you a song. Next. Any other questions? Okay. I don't see any online. Thank you so much, Councilwoman, for your your presentation and, and always being here to present um, and give us information on what's happening. Uh, Board of Water Supply, I don't see him. Um, he was on earlier. Christopher, and then um, U.S. Army Garrison, Lieutenant Colonel Brunus. Okay, none. So then moving on to U.S. Navy, um, Victor Flint and um, Danny Hayes. Uh, Aloha community, um, happy new year. I uh, will uh, go through these very quickly. Um, uh, but before, um, we do have a representative from the uh, Joint Task Force who is here to be able to answer any, uh, any further questions, um, if, if you all have any. Um, so first off, um, the Joint Task Force Red Hill completed their gravity defueling December 15th, um, removing more than 104 million gallons of uh, fuel from those tanks. Um, so the next steps uh, from here on out would be to, um, to remove the residual fuel uh, following regulator approval. Um, so now there will be a uh, transition uh, for the next uh, few months uh, between the uh, Joint Task Force uh, Red Hill and the Navy uh, Closure Task Force. Uh, so that's what um, um, uh, we can all expect in the next few months coming up. Um, also, the uh, drinking water long-term monitoring uh, information booth uh, we're still running that program. The Navy's still doing that, uh, providing information to uh, the communities on how to read their uh, water report. Um, we we provided that information uh, to the to the board. Um, the next uh, two that are coming up on the fourth uh, Thursday uh, at the main exchange. So if you all want to go there um, for that, and also on the tenth at the uh, Capalina uh, Night Market over in um, Iroquois Point area. So um, uh, with that, I will turn it over to Uncle Vic, and uh, he'll have some more information. Mahalo. Thank you, Brother Danny. Victor Flint, Naval Facilities. This is the Pearl Harbor and Public Works update and report. Navy is coordinating with Make-A-Wish Foundation, along with the Miller family. Uh, their daughter wishes to visit ships and other lady sailors. So the Navy is going to ensure Young Miss Miller's wish comes true. Waianae Community and Military Initiative Meeting 
Coming up January 26th, the Navy is invited to participate with the YNI Community Military Initiative. Uh, Navy topics of discussion will include Lulu Lake cultural access, disaster prep and planning, Koli Koli Pass Road, and an amendment to the Koli Koli Pass Memorandum of Understanding. Hopefully, Nanakuli community and community leaders will be involved with this as well, and they will, hopefully they will also be asked to participate because Lolo Ole and Koli Koli Pass fall within their Kuliana. Speaking of Koli Koli, it's clear, passable for a declared emergency access and egress. That's all I have. Any questions from myself, Danny, or our joint task force rep? Any questions, board member? I have one. Oh, board member Kale Wilbur? Uh, the January 6th uh, uh, initiative, uh, uh, time and place? Uh, I believe it's the church behind uh, McDonald's, but I'm not sure because I only found out about it this afternoon. So I wrote it down, and I want to make sure that I would hope that Nanakuli is invited to this as well. But it's January 26, and we're asked to participate, but it's not our our show. You, and this is uh, you're talking about uh, Sacred Hearts in Waianae, the that or where oh, which McDonald's? Hong Wan behind. Oh, Hong Wan Okay. McDonald's. Waianae McDonald. Yeah. Next door. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Philip. Okay. Thank you for that question. Um, any other questions or even for the joint task force? Oh, go ahead, board member Lanford. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oh, happy new year, Vic um, and Danny. I, I guess, you know, I I haven't been up Hakimo and Parker lately, and then for some reason I had to go up uh, a couple of days ago. Mm. And you know, I I I gonna bug the navy until the navy can, uh, put some security lights outside here and you know try to help us because I've been waiting. I don't know how long I've been on a board since two thousand nine, I think, or two thousand ten, and you know we've been addressing the navy as good neighbors if they can at least put some security lights up there. I don't I don't think it's a, a arm and a leg that the navy can is going to get hurt, but it seems as though I asking for a couple of bazookas or one army tank or something, uh, you know, the Navy is not a good neighbor, you know, for, for me anyway, for me, if I had my choice, I, uh, Mr. Eli left because if Mr. Eli was here, he would say, you know, I know what Mikey would say, <laughs> but Uncle Rich, yeah. Your recommendation and your suggestion was put to our assistant public works officer who put that up uh, for budgeting uh, for 2024. Now we have to compete for money, well, not me. They have to compete for money for projects, but that's been submitted and it hasn't been rejected. But the wheels of the government for, for these projects move real slow. In the meantime, we put up signage on the fence. We have crews uh, called the Dirt Boys that come out there and pick up other people's Opala. That's our own people now. So I hear what you're saying. It's still in the works. That's all I can say. But it's not, nobody said no yet. Yeah. Well, I thought Santa Claus was coming through the Navy, but I guess so. Uh, Santa Claus never reached, so. Mahalo. If no other questions, um, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, we, we're almost finished. If we can have, so I don't see anybody from Congresswoman Joe Takuda's office. Um, if we have Governor's Rep, Stacey Lynn, thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Um, Stacey and Eli. With representing the governor's office. I do have questions that still need answers that you folks asked in November, so I'm still working on it. Okay. Um, as far as the numbers for the gun collection that happened, um, member Wahilani did ask about the process on what happens after the guns are collected. So I did wanna share that 
if the guns are once the guns are taken, um, if they were stolen and belong to another owner, uh, the owner is notified. However, the rest of the guns are destroyed. So they're not kept, they're not resold, they are destroyed. Um, we are still um, waiting to hear back on when we're gonna have another event like that. So once we have that information, I'll get back to you folks. Um, I apologize we didn't have the January newsletter for you folks yet, but as soon as it's ready, I'll make sure to email the board members and have copies um, next meeting. Sorry, I know we're pressed for time. Um, so if there's any questions that the board members or community has, I can take them now. Um, I believe board member Perry. Did you Thank have a question? Chair. Hi, Stacey Lynn. You know, I'm, I'm really, I'm really concerned of um, what that prospectors of island coming to um, Maui to help rebuild Maui and utilize all the FEMA uh, monies. Um, and where the state have partnership with developers. I'm really concerned of the, the state lands that, um, I don't know how it works, but it just feels like we're going to lose our lands to the developers. So I understand that the state and the developers, the state give them X amount of dollars to to build a project, but the developer put the most money in it to in that development to get the job. But it seems that the developer are, are getting ahead instead of the state. And maybe that's why there's no rent control because these developers come from elsewhere. And I, I just think that's part of the problem of the high cost of rent, but mainly I'm concerned of all these prospectors claiming to wanna to help the Maori people, um, residents and um, we losing our state lands. Thank you. Thank you. Mahalo. Okay, um, so I'm not seeing any other questions. I would like to at least finish off with our Senator, um, if Patrice has something to report and also Representative Gates, who is okay. online still. Um, I have one question. question for Auntie, could you state it real, because we got four minutes to yeah. get to the, uh, the last two. I have two. a question. Thank you. You know, and, uh, they consider that as the tent city yeah. by the intermediate school. You know, the veterans, they're gonna be, um, they had had uh, got, attained that money, okay? So they're going to be building and improving, um, and it's a state function. Why wasn't the community notified properly when it's more into a community? And this is for the veterans, which I have no problem for our veterans, but they deserve better. And you making you mixing apple and lemons together because they need their own special bubble. And that's what the state cannot be mixing apples and lemon. So we want to find out more about the project, okay. which the fund is coming in. So it needs to be more collaboration to our community. Um, that's all I want to know from the governor. And, uh, okay. you know, using uh, the other concern is using emergency government, emergency proclamation for um, tiny homes or whatever, just buying properties. You know, there need to be more collaboration because uh, we don't have it from um, our reps. So we would appreciate someone like you that represents the governor to come and inform us. Okay. And notice our head, mahalo. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mahalo, Stacey Lim for being here. Um, okay, for Senator Miley Shimabukuro, we have Patrice online. Thank you for sending the Google Docs. Um, is there anything you wanna state um for anything right now patrice oh hi everybody happy new year um i happy just shared the newsletter and chat and left my email if anybody has any questions so just for time's sake i'll just take any questions back to um, send it if anybody has any any question okay i have um mr salcedo patrice hi i try to call aloha. Aloha. happy new year 
try to get in touch with you folks today, but nobody's answering the phones. I want a meeting with our uh, our uh, health committee chair, Joyce Ann Ventura, Henry Aquino, in our public safety uh, committee, Glenn Wakai and uh, Brendan Alafonte. Okay? So, but you folks sit on the health committee. I want to talk about SR30, Act 155, and uh, another act. Hold on a second. Give me a moment. Act 255. We need to repeal this and amend it, okay, to incorporate more, especially SR30. We need to work with that. I need to talk to the health committee because they approved it, all right? So I, I need yeah, to have you folks into, enter that round for me as our representatives. I don't want to move forward beyond you guys. I want you guys to move forward and open that door for us as a community community member. So I'll have you guys contact me, please. Okay. We'll That's do. All I have. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Patrice. Any thank other you guys? Thank you. Thank you for sticking around Take too. Care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Your... Aloha. <laughs> Um, and then we have Representative Gates. Aloha, Chair. Aloha. Happy New Year's, board members. Representative Cedric Gates here. Uh, I know we're pressed on time, but I do want everyone to know that January 17th is when opening session begins for the 2024 legislative session. Uh, there is still time to share your ideas for legislation that you would like us to introduce for this year. Uh, we also want to be mindful that we do have to draft bills and that can take up to a week or so um, to get those bills drafted. So the sooner you can get that information to us on what your concerns are, or bills that you want us to introduce, the faster we can get working on them. Uh, the other thing I did want to mention is that I know the Salcedos have been bringing up the issue regarding clean and sober homes. We are still working on this matter with DOH as well as the other agencies involved in this. Uh, it is taking quite some time for them to get all the information that we're going to need to introduce legislation this year. Um, so we're just again waiting on on those folks on the administration side to get all that information to us. But I do also want the community to know that they don't have to wait to attend these meetings to get in contact with our office to work on issues. I have a online link set up uh, at calendy.com slash rep gates, and you can look at my schedule and schedule a meeting with me directly. You don't have to call nobody to, to get that scheduled out. I'd be added directly to my calendar. So with that being said, I uh, just wanted to wish everybody a happy new year and looking forward to working with you folks. A lot. Mahalo. Rep Gates, is it possible for you to put that link in the chat? Um, Jeff is requesting for, yes. I think, for six minutes. Mahalo. Yep, I'll drop it in now. Mahalo. Thank you. Okay. Mahalo. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you guys so much. Um, so just board committee reports and membership, um, transportation meeting, uh, with myself and Mr. Lanford is on uh, every first Thursday. So this Thursday is transportation um, here at the craft room for this month. And then Hawaiian affairs is currently not scheduled. Um, parks is Kale Wilbur and Mr. Lanford second Tuesday um, here also in the craft room. Uh, we have housing, homelessness and development with um, cross crab as well as the education. And I believe is Mr. Endel, you're on that one as well. Coach out here. Okay, it's not on here. Sorry, I'll I'll update that. Um, so no other reports. Does anybody have any pressing announcements or anything to, to report as far as committee? Yeah. Hi, um, board member Crab. I'm chair of the Housing Homeless Committee and also um, co-chair for the Education Committee. I would just like to clarify that I've been doing everything by the book. Um, I did submit all my um, agendas on time for that one that was um, reported late. Um, that was not up to me. I submitted it on time. There may have been a glitch in the city system, but it was just not posted. I don't have the authority to post on the NCO website, so I'm not sure about that. Um, in terms of the um, meeting that was requested in the joint 
um, Housing and Transportation Committee. The meeting that was requested for clean and sober homes was requested through or for Senator Shima Bukuro and Representative Gates' office. It was not um, requested to be held by the Housing Committee. I would like to make that clear. And also, I have also submitted uh, my minutes on time as well. Thank you. Okay, mahalo so. Um, number nine announcement. So, on our next board meeting is going to be Tuesday, February 6th at 6 30 here in this room. Um, and just some um, encouragements to our community uh, com to be community conscious. Uh, our community consciousness and values is to be part of the solution and not the problem. Um, but again, haoli makahiki ho. And Stay excited for a wonderful new year, and I hope that um, everyone has had a blessed new year so far. Did you have a question? I'm going to follow up with as far as this uh, the housing committee as well too, because I I'm going to have to agree to disagree. We just need to follow up and to deal with uh, Cedric Gates's office since October. We the community needs an answer. We will yeah. definitely continue that discussion, but Thank right you. now we adjourn the meeting at 9:35. Thank you guys so much. Have a great night. Night, mom.